story file uh, file document for you to send to you. Your dad has one. Your brother has one. You'll have one very soon, but you pretty much know the backstory and you feel comfortable with your character, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's see. Now, I told about old Tony being clunky. I said I've done a couple of solo DM sessions. We could have disaster. We could have success. We'll see. All right. Look. Something else, or something else I want to tell you guys. Okay, so like getting like the three of you guys' characters together when like we're starting off where you don't know each other at all, uh, that's always like a challenge if you want to do it in like an interesting way or a realistic way, so to speak. Um, so there will be a lot of time probably early in today's session where you guys aren't all together. Okay, I normally don't really like doing that, I don't like isolating like one character or two characters. Normally, the whole group is together. Uh, but this is kind of like, you know, you'll have to get together. Like, uh, I'm sure you guys saw uh, the first Avengers movie, right? The movie starts, they're not, they're not all together as the Avengers yet, right? Cap's doing his thing, Iron Man's doing his thing, Thor's doing his thing, and then they all get together. So th th this is kind of like uh, uh, the first Avengers movie. You're all separate, and this is how you're going to end up getting together, like an origin story, okay? Um, so there'll be some of that. But in the, in the future, you guys will pretty much be together the entire session. But today, there might be some periods of time, maybe up to 20 minutes, but one of you is sitting there like, I'm not even with the other two guys. What am I waiting for here? So that might happen today. So be patient with that, but that'll be today only probably. Hold on one second. You're right. I didn't see this down here. So cool. Okay. Um, and, and just to be sure, so Ryder say something. You can hear Ryder say something. Hello. You Hello. Can hear that Hello. Okay. Yes, and and you can hear Koji, right? You already talked about talked to him, so I I, I was speaking with Cadgar moments ago, Dennis. Perfect. Kildor is just a, a little anal uh, retentive to make sure we have all the technical issues uh, taken care of. Kildor is world renowned for his uh, technical expertise. Yes, and his an, and his anality. So we're good to go. No, believe, believe me, we it's, yeah, it's excellent. Yeah, I'm not that I'm not that great with the tech stuff, so you, it's. I'm always uh, grateful to have you around to, to do these things. All right. The, the Probably the last thing I wanted to say was that, uh, well, but the last thing, but, so I, I do a lot, I, I do a lot of role playing. There'll be a lot, there'll be a lot, maybe more than you guys like, because you're young. There'll be a lot of you guys like talking to NPCs, trying to figure things out, trying to decide what you have to do. I'm a, heavy, I'm a lot heavier on that than I am on the actual combat. Okay. So I, I'm trying. I, so you guys, especially early on in the story, you guys might find there's a lot of like talking and figuring, figuring stuff out as opposed to what they call hack and slash, okay? And additionally, with you guys each being level one, we're starting at level one, as you can understand, as a dungeon master, my combat options that I can provide you are limited, right? I can't have you running into dragons when you're three or level one. Otherwise, you'll all be level dead very, very quickly. So, you know, so some of the early combat when you're level one can be a little monotonous. You're fighting kind of low-level animals and creatures and stuff like that. But it won't be too long before you level to level two. And even at level two, I feel like all of a sudden I have a lot more options that I can give you more interesting creatures to fight. So if, there, if, if any combat today gets a little monotonous, you know, realize it's only because you're level one and it's hard to give you something more challenging and also trying to give you a good chance of surviving. I'm not trying to kill anybody. I try to make it so like I don't want to make it too easy for the characters because I want them to be challenged, but I'm also not trying to kill, kill the characters. I'm not a DM who likes to kill the characters. Uh, having said that, you can be killed. You know, I know your dad plays the knockout rule. Um, I do play the uh, you can die rule. Okay, <laughs> so but I'm not trying to kill anybody, and I'm not gonna make it like oh you made a bad move now you're dead. You know, it's not gonna be like that. Okay, I try to be very fair and try to give every opportunity. And it, I would say that it would be my fault. Okay, so uh, I'm, I'm not looking to let that happen. Okay, then you're going to the character. But anyway. All right, uh, so I hope you guys are all okay with that. The, uh, so the last couple of things we're going to do, unfortunately, we have some housekeeping to do. Dennis, uh, I didn't get to do your custom thing in the in the game. Um, so your character is not quite ready, it looks like. Oh, yes, you, you finished them off. No, you didn't. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing it right now. So are you, try, are you trying to put it in there or no? Well, yeah, I'm doing it right now because I before it, I had chosen the alkalite, and now that yeah. I've, I've, I've gone to test is it, it, is, is, is it letting you do the custom one they gave you, or, or, or I have to do that? No, it's um, it's here are my choices. Right? Okay. I can choose either exile or noble. I can't choose 
uh, the one I made up. No, yeah. Noble exile hermit. Or All I right. can choose no, noble ex, noble exile or hermit. So I'm on hermit yeah. right now, and I'm fine do with me, that. Do, do, no, do me. If, uh, you're fine with that, yeah. We, uh, yeah, well, yeah. I, I, we can, we can change and edit things after, because all, all it is, it, it was just a cool thing to add to your backstory. All it will do is add a couple of proficiencies and change like one or two of your items, but it's nothing that's going to really hinder your combat in any way or anything important today. Okay. Okay. I, I fixed all that, so now I'm me, set as a hermit that has some noble, you know, choices on the other stuff. So. Yeah. Well. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll fix it during the week or whatever. We'll, we'll pop in there. Uh, now, something happened to uh, I don't know what happened to um, to uh, Koji's character, but when I click on it, it's asking me to create a brand new character. So what, what, what do you see when you click on on your character? If you single click on your name on the right there, Koji. He has his character sheet there, and has oh wait a minute, I see. So. Uh, we have well, I, 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 I think there's a lot of things we didn't finish with him, perhaps, uh, as a paladin. Okay. No, but we did, we did everything. I think. Hold on. Hold on. Let, 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 hold on. Let, let, let me click. Don't click for a minute, okay? Okay. I don't, no one click. I'm gonna click it. Click it for a second. Let's oh, see. Oh yeah, we like lost, lost everything. All right, we'll run through. The, we'll run through this real quick. It won't take long at all. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll kind, of, I'll kind of talk you through a code. You okay? I'll, I'll probably be faster. I've created a lot of characters. I just created another character about a half hour ago. So, if you do, you want to share your screen so he can see what you're doing. Then you can. Oh, can he see it now? You can't see. Okay. Yeah. If yeah. you share your screen on the the stream yard, it'll work. All right. Then we can all we can all watch the master. Oh, the I'm, not, I'm, master not, I'm not himself. I'm not a master. master. Well, I think this is more yeah. like the. Uh, the um, the more experienced novice with the other novices. Nice. Okay, so we're watching. <laughs> it's, it's it's like it's like I'm in second grade and you guys are in first grade, as opposed to <laughs> anyone being a master. I think is, is why it is, you know, or maybe third and second grade. Oh, look at a little bump there. Okay. Hey, Dennis, can you look on your character sheet and tell me if your character, because of his quote unquote race, don't tell anyone it's a secret, is um. Has dark vision? I don't know if he does or not. I think he does. Uh, Cody, I actually remember a lot of things that, we, that you did before, so I'm, I'm just punching them in right right now. Um, and some things like the languages won't matter because technically there's, there's no other languages right now, but common in this realm. And some of these things will change and can be changed as we go, you know, down the road. Mm -hmm. I like Paladins. I'm trying, nice to see the, um, I'm trying to see the uh, wh where is dark vision at? Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, um, dark vision, racial half health. Yes, it's there in or the night, lower or right. night, night vision or something like that, right? Yeah, dark vision. Yeah, now, Koji, I don't know if you, did your dad talk to you at all about uh, your your knighthood, your burgeoning knighthood, or no? Um, no, not really. Not really. Okay. All right. So basically, like. In the game, we give you the background of a knight, but really, uh, when I say in the game, I mean in roll 20, because you have to choose something. But really, you're a knight in training. So probably when you hit level two or level three, I'll say that they turn you, they they, they, they christen you a knight, okay? And there's some stuff in here where you're supposed to get retainers and stuff like that, but you're not really going to have retainers, because it's not, not really that type of society. But you, but I'll, I'll make sure you have other benefits to your knighthood, uh, besides a, a cool title. Who wouldn't want to be a knight, so, okay? Um, okay. All right. Uh, skill proficiencies. I need to choose two of these things. Athletics, insight, intimidation, medicine, or religion. Okay. Uh, you probably want athletics because that comes in handy sometimes with trying to do certain feats. Yep. Is that good? Yep. All right. And, and then which of these other ones do you want? Or do you have any questions about them? You don't really need religion because it's more like religious history. And we don't really have much religious history around here. Um, we had insight, intimidation, choice? insight, intimidation, and medicine. Say it again. Um, is intimidation a good choice? Would that be a good choice? Yes, if you like to intimidate someone, certainly. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes I would a, love to use to get intimidation. It, 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 that's a fun one to have. Okay. Um, 
Well, unfortunately, my brother, I play with, I Dungeon Master every Tuesday uh, for my brother, my mom, who's in her late 70s, and my niece, who's 16. And unfortunately, they, they, my brother is taken to, uh, to interrogating all the prisoners with very, very harsh physical <laughs> interrogation. He's basically torturing every, 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 every prisoner that they take for information. But uh, so, so, so he doesn't actually have the intimidation skill, but that, I guess when he's role-playing, it, it still works out. So you've you got an ability here called Lay on Hands, um, Koji, which allows you to heal wounds, okay? Up to, uh, you can do a total of up to five hit points. Uh, so it's your paladin level times five. So you're level one, so right now you can heal people up to five hit points. You can only do it once per, like, long rest or short rest or something like that. I think once for once for, yeah, once, for yeah, once for a day, pretty much. And you can divide it up. You can do three here and two there or something like that, okay? You've also got, like, some detecting the undead thing, but that's not going to come in to play here. Spoiler alert. Uh, oh, no. We don't have his ability scores from last time recorded anyway, do we? Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think we, I don't think, I don't think we wrote those down. Can I re-roll? Hold on, let me can re-roll? Or, or we could scroll. I, I can try to scroll up and see what I find. I got Alton. I got Dungeon Master Tom. Yeah. Somehow it's yeah they're not there. I'm trying to remember, I don't think we recorded the last session, so we can't uh, like go back to look at it. I, 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 I'm scrolling up in the in the, in the chat box. Oh yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, that's I, a good I, idea. Uh, okay. So, I, see, okay. I, I see a bunch of rolls from Ryder. You no, guys understand? I, I I wrote I wrote it out. Remember, I wrote like for each no, character. I wrote all those are my rolls right there. No, but I wrote, I wrote a summary of them. So okay. right underneath there, go scroll down just a little bit, Tom. You should see a message from me with all of his numbers. So a little bit more. Right here, probably. There it is. probably. 16, 14, 14, 13, 12, 10. Which got turned into 17, 15, 15, 14, 13, 11, because plus one for the racial bonus. Okay. Uh, now do the racial what? bonus automatically. That's right. Okay. Sure. Um, and... I don't remember. I don't remember what was what. Do you have the player's handbook in front of you, do you? I do. So the number, t the, the first choice Count is strength. Right. Yeah. It was Might be. I think it's. I don't know, charisma is important for him also. Yeah, strength one, and then charisma. It says two here. Right, the way it was. Stra yeah, strength one, charisma two is what I got here, and that's what the handbook says. Okay. Yeah. I'm on so it. you want to go in that direction? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, first strength is the highest one, so that was the. That's hey, uh, do you have the ability to type things in on, on your character right here, Ko uh, Koji? Yeah, he can. Yeah. All right. Um, right why, why, don't you fill, why don't you fill in your uh, numbers and let me know when you're done? Or, or, or you can't do it because I'm, I'm on the same. No, he's I, okay. So I'll, I'll, 16 there. And then what were the other numbers? 14 on, 14, on charisma. 14, yep. You want to see mine? No. Then you probably, you probably want a 14 for constitution. Well, 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 so after strength and charisma, constitution is usually good because you get more hit points. Okay. Uh, 13, um, 12, and 10. 13 on dex. Yeah, dex 30 is pretty good because it helps you go early in the round. And 10. Yep. And that's Wait. it. And then save. Let me know you when you're done. No, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't click save. Just close. Well, I think just close out of it. Okay, just close. Okay, there you go. Get there you, in. Oh, you did that. All right, hold on a second. Yeah. Let me see. Let me see if. Let me see if I can. Let me see if it's it's stayed here. Okay. Yeah. We go. Okay. Looks good. All right. Uh. We give the night background tool proficiencies. Code, you want to be good with a dice set, a dragon chess set, a playing guard set, or a three dragon anti set. Um, They're not terribly uh, important. Okay, so dice set. All righty. Not the card. Uh, the card. Oh, yeah. and, the, and the language is only common for now, so d don't worry about that too much. I'll, I'll just I'll just throw a language in there for now. 
those will come out later on long, well well down well more down the campaign all right I, I, let me think after i'm closing out again when you get in there and click on background and scroll down your and, and choose your personality traits yeah. and, don't, and don't feel terribly beholden to the personality traits you choose here on this screen because however you play the character that's really your personality you know like you're supposed to do lawful good, but if you start like senselessly slaughtering innocent people, obviously you won't. You won't be. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll say, well, okay, obviously you're not lawful good anymore. <laughs> he has, he has, he did the role, and it randomly assigned him the flaw. I have an insatiable desire for carnal pleasure. So keep that in mind with his character. That's why his okay. last name is Bone Man. So he's can't okay. be Bone Man. A religious guy. Yes, <laughs> but he has to fight that because he wants to remain pure. But he has these desires. That's his flaw. Okay. All right. Uh, did you close That's out of right. it? Okay. Probably the flaw of many teenagers. Okay. Let me get out here. Okay. So that should be good. That's one thing with D and D. There's a lot of setup, but then once you get going, it, you know, it's a lot better. Uh, we give you the we give you the class equipment to start. You can choose. So you automatically have chainmail and a holy symbol. Yeah, he wanted a two. long sword. He wanted a long sword. And uh, what was the other one? Uh, the shield, the javelin right? for the and, 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 a, and a shield. Correct. Yes, a shield. Yeah, I would take a shield. You want javelins? Yes. Okay. Priest pack or explorer pack? Take the explorer pack. I, I, I'm also like every DM is different. You want the priest pack or the explorer pack? Um, which one would you recommend, really? I recommend the explorer's pack. Okay. Also, I'm saying I'm I'm really not a stickler for like, oh man, do we have any rope? Oh, you used it like you know, you know, used it two hours ago. It's like I, I'm more like, yeah, you've got some rope. You know, I'm not really, I'm not, I'm pretty laid back as a DM in terms of like those really like those really. Monday my new de my, my two uh, yeah details that that some uh, that some guys tend to uh, harass their players with. Uh, okay. So no spells for you yet. I think I'm not getting spells to to level two. Yeah. I think so, yeah. I'm going to close that of this. All right, then you open up your character sheet, click on review, and I think everything is good. And then when it's when you think it's done, click apply changes. No, just let it load. Oh. Yeah. Because I think I'm excited that I figured out how to put you guys on on the pro, on the proper map. Apply yes. <laughs> Perfect. There you go. I apply, I'm applying changes right now. Des, wait until well, – well, the, the big key, Dennis, will be – well, first of all, since I'm well, well, we'll see. We'll see. It'll be interesting. I'm big on story, guys. There might be a lot of story early on before you get to any fighting. It might even be very limited fighting today. We'll see. But but I'll uh, and I'll, I'll I'll ask you for your guys' feedback. Like your dad can talk to you, or whatever, after the sessions, and you give me some feedback. I, I'd like some more fighting. There's too much talking. It takes too long to do things like whatever. Like I, I want to tailor it so you guys get a good experience. So like you give you got you, you give your dad feedback. Your dad can tell you I'm very long winded, so it can very easily become a, a talk fest, which I know you guys don't don't want. It's not talking and dragons, right, Dennis? Yeah, definitely will like it. It's Dungeons and Dragons. Exactly. My mom got mad at me yesterday's game, Dennis, on Thursday's game. What, what did you do this time? Well, the the, bad, the big bad guy said said that I'm here to kill you guys. And I had everyone roll for initiative, and she got the high roll for initiative. She says, I want to ask him a question. She said, can I ask him a question? She said, can I ask him a question? I said, well, you, you can you can ask him a question. You can do what you want. You can ask him a question. So she asked him a question, and then she wanted to move and do an attack. I'm like, well, your turn is six seconds. You took, I'm going to say you took half your turn asking him the question, and she got mad at me and said, "Well, you didn't explain that to me," you know. <laughs> uh, that yeah, but that's nothing like you should tell her the story of the dungeon master you had that was, you know, 
purposely with yeah. vital information. Yes. Or that my druid turned into a spider. I wanted to walk down the wall, guys. He made me roll an ability check to see if I could walk down the wall as a spider. Yeah, I think <laughs> spiders can do that. Yeah. If I was a fish, he'd make, if I was a fish, he'd make me roll to see if I could swim. <laughs> let, 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 let me know if you're done. When you're done, Koji. Um, or should I say yeah, Cadgar? What do you say? Uh, yeah, I, I say for the changes. So do I just exit or? Uh, yeah, yeah, just double, just click on the X there. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing my screen, Dennis, because there's supposed to be things that I, that I can see that you guys can't see. Okay. okay. Cadgar the Bone Man. Uh, I'm just looking at it real quick. Looks good. Okay. All right, all right, let, let, let's talk a little bit about moving around and stuff on, on the Roll20 screen real quick before we get going. Okay. It's going to seem clunky and awkward to you guys at first, but it's uh, it, after a while I get used to it, you're like, oh, this isn't too bad. Okay. Uh, basically, first thing you do in the top right, okay, okay. Um, as you know from last time, and Koji just rolled, that's the chat box, and that's also like where your dice rolls will appear, right? Right. So you so, know the characters... Like that little circle by well, drag and drop it. Well, you don't have to do anything. Well, I, I like, like I just clicked on it. I just rolled a twenty there. You, you guys saw that, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you could also type something in there if you want to. Okay. Um. All right. Now, so that we'll call it, that. That's called the chat box, and where the dice happens, and where the desk. And that's that's a chat box. Okay. Uh, okay. the second one you don't have to worry about. The third one is called the journal. That's where all you guys' characters' names are. You see that? Yes. But yes, I make it about uh, 20, 15 minutes, 20 minutes more, okay? That's called that's called the journal, where all your characters are, okay? Now, the, this part is, like, kind of stupid, okay? Basically, if you single-click on your character, okay, then then your character sheet comes up, right? Mm -hmm. Then, like, then you got to double-click on his name in the top left, and it'll minimize it to, like, a transparent rectangular bar like on the map, on the map grid. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. All right. Let me get a confirmation from everyone. Uh, Dennis, do you have that? Yes. Alton, you got it? Yeah. Cadgar, you got it? Yes. Okay. All right. So, 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 all right, so basically, this is how you kind of easily keep your character sheet on the map without clogging up the whole map, okay? So when you want to look at your character sheet, you just double-click on your name, and it opens up, okay? All right. All right. Now, um, now, now, right now, you guys have no tokens on the map because I took them all off, okay? To get your token on, now you, now you drag, like, your, your token icon from the right onto the map. So each of you guys drag, drag your guy onto the map somewhere. Do I just click? If you like this, so you're going to click it? Oh. Do you do that? Yeah. Hold on. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Oh. I was doing it earlier. Yeah, yeah, you click on his whole... Uh, yeah, don't click on the token to grab, actually. Click on his whole... On, the, on your whole name. Like I said, it's a clunky, stupid program, but... All right, there we go. I see Alton up by Eastridge. All right, there you go. Okay, here. I, I see I see Catgar the Bone Man. And so where is Kildor is the one by Eastridge. Yeah. I'm the one that has a pointy ears. Kind of pointy Okay. Ears. I got you. Where, where all right, well, so our characters do kind of look the same. But Koji's you can see the shield and the sword. And Riders is the one that's more of a oh no. It's the opposite. Co no, we, we need, we, yeah, well, I, I I don't see Riders character Rider's out there. Not on there. Writers right here. No. That's no. That, oh, that's that, that, no, that, that's an that, that's yeah, an NPC. Where are you? Hold on. He's, we're trying to figure it out. Uh, he's he's on a kind of a a Chromebook, and maybe it's not the best choice. So maybe okay. Give him a different computer next time. I can put okay. him out there. Yeah, put him throw him out there. Are right, you see yourself? You see yourself now? Right there, you are. So you're there. Nice. Right. You see yourself, right, Alton? Right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um. Okay. So you guys are reaching the map now. Okay. Now, now this is uh, someone just disappeared. Who disappeared? 
Oh, De- 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 Dennis. Who's it? That is, that's Koji, right? Yeah. Move. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Okay, Koji. Okay. Um, so basically, I mean, now basically, all right. If you single click on your character, okay, you're gonna get like three bars, three circles right above your head, okay. And you're also going to get like a setting thing on the bottom left. And then there's like a, another one next to that that's that, like effects. Okay. So if you single click on your character, do you see that? Do you see that stuff? Yeah. Okay. Now there's a way to do it so that your hit points will appear in one of those and your armor class in another. But I'm not going to try to do it now because uh, I'll t- I don't want to take all day setting up. Okay. But um, just be aware of that. Okay. Um, so to move your character, it's very easy. Just, just click him and drag him and, and move him, okay? Now, on a regular map, okay, on a regular battle map, each of these squares, you guys see these, like, faint squares? Uh, like, see the squares overlaying the map? Yeah. On a regular map, each of these squares is five feet, okay? Uh, like, for combat terms. Obviously, this is not five feet, unless you guys aren't giants, okay? This is not five feet, but it, this bridge just happens to have squares on it, so I'm just showing you, Okay. Um, okay, now a couple of things you can do. If you look at the, the top left, right? Okay, the, where there's, there's like, where you, where you click to roll the dice, there's all those things there, okay? Uh, there's two things you're going to want, okay? The one, two, three, four. The fifth one there, it looks like a circle. It's like below the search bar, the search, below the uh, looking glass, okay? You click on that. You click on that once, okay, and it should lock, okay. And now, if you do a drag function, if you drag the mouse from your character anywhere, okay, you should see a distance. It'll, it'll tell you how many feet. Do you see that? How did you do that? I don't know that. That that you click this. Yeah, I got that. And then you and then you look okay, at that. Yeah, That's the distance. Got it. Okay. All right, so that when you're in combat or, or like when you're trying to figure out what you want to do, you can look and see how far you are from, you know, from the bad guy or from whatever it is you're trying to do, okay? All right, what, what gets frustrating is that, you, like, you do that and then you forget to do it. You try to do something else and it's still measuring and you're like, God damn it, okay? So what you want to do is you click back on that arrow on the top left and that gives you back to kind of your normal, your normal functions. You follow? Yes. Yeah. Turtle, 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 turtle. 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 She doesn't have to charge her. Nothing. Go. You have a dog? You're right, Dennis? Yeah, just um, trying to get a better computer for Ryder real quick. Okay, all right. Also, by the way, I see that. Is that Dennis? Whose screen am I looking at? Is that your screen, Dennis? Yes. All right, you might notice that uh, on the bottom left, like all those icons are really taking up a lot of space. If you click on your settings, okay, up in the top right, I'll click on the settings, and everyone should do this, and scroll yeah. down some. Uh, so you'll scroll down some, scroll down a couple of times to, uh, 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 yeah, it'll say player video avatar size. Okay. You see names on anything? And, and oh, go to names. Go, go, yeah, go to names. Go to names only. And you see right there, video slash avatar size. Love it. You can pick a small names only. I pick, I Perfect. Pick yeah, yeah. Otherwise, it's really killing your screen. Your screen space. Okay. All right. Now, now, when we get into combat, I'm going to show you guys something. Uh, all right. Now, as, as you guys know, because you guys have played it uh, at least a few times with your dad, combat almost always starts with the rolling of initiative, right? So. Yeah, yeah. Um, in the, you can roll in the, in, and roll 20, you can roll initiative and you can roll your attacks and you can cast your spells from your character sheet. Okay. Um, so I want you to each like click on your character. Okay. I shouldn't, I'm sorry. No, I want each you to, to double click on your, like that little rectangle thing. Right. Double click on that little rectangle yeah. thing to bring up your, uh, your character sheet. Okay. Oh, this thing. Remember? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. My bad. Let me, let me start again. Because this is the part I hate about this thing. You have to actually single click on your character first, okay? And then and then double click the rectangle to open them up, okay? Got it. 
And then near the top middle of your sheet where it says like initiative, it has your initiative modifier. If you click on the like in the INIT, like the initiative abbreviation, it'll roll initiative for that character in the chat window automatically. Um, I've missed what you're saying. So you, you click your, bring up your character sheet. No, you bring up your. No, uh, single click, so, uh, single click on your token first. Your token is the thing on the map. Single click on right. your token, then open, then open your character sheet. Then on on the main page of your character sheet, the core page, your character sheet's got like three tabs, like core, bio, and spells. The, near the well, top center, bio, bio and info, character sheet, attributes and abilities. A core. There's no it, core. It, no core. Bio and info, character sheet, attributes and abilities. No, uh, no, on the on the character sheet thing that shows. On the tab that shows all your stuff, like your strength, intelligence, wisdom, on, on that tab. Okay. You, you, see, you see what I'm saying? On, on that, on that tab, that that's your actual character sheet. On that one, there's also like three little tabs. Like one says core, one says spell, something like that. But anyway, the one that's got all of your main stats on it. Yeah. The one, the one that's got all your main stats, sort of like strength, intelligence, wisdom, initiative, right. all that stuff. Yeah, you click on the initiative there. There you go. Kildor just rolled an initiative of 12.13. Each you, each you guys roll initiative if you want, please. We're still getting back in, but we'll get it. All right, well, well if he's not back in there, that's fine. All right, so whenever I ask you to roll for initiative, just do that, okay? Okay. And the game will bring up something here, which allows me to – supposed to anyway – you guys should all be in the uh, initiative role here, but you're not for some reason. But don't worry about that. All right. Hopefully, maybe next time. Okay. And, I and there is something I can do to make it easier for you guys. Uh, I, d I think I did this for Alton before. Is Ryder in there right now or no? We're working on it. All right, I should leave that. Oh, 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 he exited the game. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'll leave it like this for now. There's a way I can I can set up a stroke, but I don't know how to do that yet. So we'll go stick with clicky way for now. Uh, okay, so that's how you do initiative. And the same thing for like attacking. Okay, so from that same page, you it, there should be a section that shows like your weapons and like their attack modifiers and their damage. Somewhere, like somewhere, also in kind of the top center, like a little below the initiative, maybe, maybe a little to the right, maybe. Yeah. If you see, if you see something like that, just click on the actual weapon. Okay, I see, like my 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 spells. I took my long sword. Where's your long sword? Now? Yeah. There you go. Oh, okay. So, okay, so he, there you go. So he just rolled. Sorry, so Code just rolled a 21 with his longsword, which is going to hit any day of the week, right? And then to see the damage, Koji, you click in the chat box, you click on the longsword itself. On the word longsword. There you go. That's how you get your damage. Okay? Now, the reason it rolls, the reason it gives you two rolls when you roll your attack is in case you have advantage or disadvantage. Okay? So we always take the first number on your attack roll unless you have advantage or disadvantage, all right? Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, so I, like so it's like Kildor just rolled those numbers. It's like, Dennis, let's say that 21 hit. Then you click on the actual word Warhammer in the, in the, um, in the chat box. Click on that one time. Click on Warhammer. In the That's chat Warhammer. box. And then it shows me eight points of blunted bludgeoning damage, Okay. Mm -hmm. And actually, and if you actually mouse over it, it'll show you how it got that rolling one d plus three strength. You see that? Got it. Yep. Okay. Cool. So that so, so that that's how the combat is going to go. Okay. Um, what I'd like to actually what I'd like to each to do, even though before I said we're not going to do this, this does make sense. Click on your single click on your token. Okay. Okay. And in that green circle that comes up, I want you to enter your your hit points. Enter your hit points in the green circle. Enter your armor class in the red circle. What was that? All right. K. 
You punch, you punch the numbers and hit, and hit enter. Um, armor. Okay, so the armor class is in their uh, red, right? Like my armor uh, we want. Yeah, we want. I want you to put the armor class in their green, in the red, and hit points in the green. Okay. Tell me if it actually stays. If you do that, there's a chance it won't stay. Yeah, it doesn't stay. Doesn't stay? Actually, no. I fixed it. So. So what? Oh, somebody's got it. Yeah, I got it. Oh, yeah. oh, the category's got it. Yeah. And put your health points in the green. The green, yeah. Uh, do we put anything in the blue circle? Okay. Great. Okay. So every time you guys take damage, or okay, you should subtract from that green and hit enter. Okay. Um, and the same thing if you get healed, you add on and hit enter. Okay. Um, and it gives you a quick way if I ask you if you're on my class, quick way to tell me. Um, and I think that's about it, really. Okay. I think we're pretty much ready. Uh, so. Do we have anything in the blue circle? Or um. um you can put your passive perception there if you want. Yeah. Which is... Mine's 15. And, and two. Your armor class is 18, no, too? No, passive. With, yeah, yeah my, my, my armor class is 18. Hey, yeah, yeah. Really no. Nice. All right, uh... I'll occasionally be muting my mic to check something. I'm muting it right now. Hold on. Yeah, go for it. We're trying to get Ryder caught up now. Okay. 
What are you, are you trying to get her set up on a different computer? Is that what you're doing? Yeah, because the Chromebook was too slow. And he, you know, okay. Looked at it would like take like two minutes to respond. So now okay. You know, I don't. I don't even remember how to. Koji, you seem like you know. Did you know how to calculate passive perception, Kobe? Koji. Oh, it's on the character sheet. Yeah, it's on the character sheet. Where? So if you if you, if you click it's the like on the right sheet, on the left you, side in the middle, and you scroll down, the right the to the two like it's like below charisma, but if you look yeah. down. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! It says it says pa pa passive wisdom perception. I see that. Okay. Yeah. And that's I'm gonna put I'm gonna put uh, alt and stuff in there. He's got nine hit points, AC 15, 12. So 15, 9, 12. Yeah, we'll, we'll know which ones to bring now for next time. Just sorry for the slowdown. I think we're on the right track, though. He's almost logged in. So sign in is a launch. Go. Yeah, exactly. So now you still need to bring up the stream yard so you can hear everything. Yes, hello. Yeah, that's no problem, Dennis. It's the it's the first con it's the first real session. You know, last time was what they call a session zero. I'm I'm new to roll twenty. You know, I'm hoping that things even work right for me when we get to the more of my end of stuff. So yeah, this is you know. It's always, you know, learning this awkward program, it's its not exactly uh, up to 2020 standards. But he's there. I see him right now. Very let me know. Let, uh, tell him to let me know when you can hear me. Or, or when he's set up and, and ready to go, and then, we'll get, and then we'll get started. And anything you don't remember, just, just ask me whatever. No problem. Absolutely. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. So there's a way to make your, your stuff stay with your characters no matter what I do to them, but I don't know how to do that. I am putting your characters roughly where they are supposed to be at the beginning of the, uh, of the session here. Can you hear me? Can you hear Tom through your headphones? Yeah, I can. Okay. No, I Mute me. All right, you. you guys there? Yeah. Uh, Riders there. Everything's good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so good. here's how you. So this is what it's okay. called me before. See this? Click on your face, and you have the yeah. pin nine twelve up there, and then if you want to. Click on this thing. You can move this to show your distance, how far it would be for you to get to certain spots. All right. Cool. All right. All right I think I'm we're ready. Uh, I'm not here in there. You know, that probably won't be an issue yet. My wife's going to come to do something for me in a couple of minutes, which might slow me down for about 10 minutes, but it shouldn't be an issue. Hmm. No problem. Interesting. Okay. I gotta make one adjustment to your character here, Dennis. Kildor Racing. I'm so glad you guys can't see what I'm doing. All right, we're ready to rock and roll. If you have any questions at any time, definitely you know, don't hesitate to ask. I'm a pretty friendly, easygoing general manager and person, unless I'm complaining about strat football luck. <laughs> then I can tell you. Um, and I give you guys the rundown. Okay, so like I said, we, you guys, we're all we're all starting separately. Okay, uh, Dennis, you uh, you know you read your backstory. Uh, probably last week. Are you are you fairly familiar with where you where where your backstory ended? You have a passing familiarity with it at least. 
Yes. Okay. Roddy, Roddy, you read your, would you guys rather that I called you by your real life names or by your character names? Uh, we'll call it character names. Yeah, character let's names do that. Cool. Let's try that. Let's okay. do it. All right. Uh, I can remember all the character names. El Alton. Alton, that's right. Alton, uh, you read your backstory just a little while earlier today, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah, that's right. Your backstory is actually instrumental to the beginning of the uh, campaign or the adventure, whatever word you want to use. Kagar, I gave you a little, a little summary of your backstory. It'll be fleshed out a little better when I write something up for you. Um, we're going to start with Kadgar, okay? Right now, you three guys are not. Right now, you three guys are not together. I know Alton that you look like you are right next to Kadgar on the map, but actually you aren't. Okay? There's, there, you know, it's a, it's a big. It's a big. That's a big area. It's not five feet. That's you know. A lot of miles, so don't worry about that. Okay, yeah, yeah, and, and, and again, we're focused on what's going on, like what we know is happening because I'm saying it's happening or we're saying it's happening more so than what the map or roll 20 always represents. Because it's you know, it's not like you're playing on the Sony PlayStation, you're not playing Call of Duty and everything's like in great detail and 100% right the way it's supposed to be. You know, this is like you know, looks like 1980s technology, but you know, so the, what we what we say is the reality is more important than what you see in the screen here. So keep that in mind, okay? okay. All right, here we go. All right, Cadgar, Cadgar yes. Boneman, you have finally completed your training, and the priests of destiny have given you your first mission. You and this man to your left, you and Brother Cahill, are to head out north, all the way to the mining community of Silver Run at the base of the mountains. I forgot to tell you guys about pinging. If you left click anywhere in the map and hold it, you'll get a ping. And I'm horrible at pinging because of a disability. Oh, oh that's just a nice layer. Yeah, that, yeah, that is basically where Silver Run is, kind of between the two rivers there, there, uh, somewhere like right around there, okay? Again, we're not always gonna try to be 100% specific. Anyway, category, you and Brother Cahill are to head out north all the way to the mining community of Silver Run at the base of the mountains. There you are to speak to Director Sorensen, who is the head of the mining community, and receive his blessing to open up a small outdoor temple for services in the name of the Lords of Destiny. Perhaps after some time, a more permanent structure can be established for what would be only the third temple of destiny in all of Nebuchadnezzar. It is a fairly young religion. There's one outside of Clax, and there's one outside of Eastridge, I don't like to have them in, in those cities. I like to have them out, outside a little bit, a little more to the, a little more rural, but not, you know, but close enough that people in the city can come out for services. Uh, unfortunately, you and Brother Cahill must share a horse for the journey. Your religion is young. Your religion is young and not yet wealthy. It will be a three-day ride for you and Brother Cahill until you reach Silver Run. Okay. 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 Alton, uh, let me get this going. What is going? On? What is my what is my word program doing? Hold on. Okay, Al, 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 Alton, you have been traveling. For, Al, Alton, you have been traveling for some time. You have a particular item that you were looking to cash in on, if you remember from your backstory. Uh, after selling your horse so as not to look overly wealthy, you set out on foot towards Silver Run, the mining community at the base of the mountains to the north. Uh, after a day and a half on foot in the largely uninhabited area, you now have, uh, well, sorry, after a day and a half on foot in a largely uninhabited area, you now have reached the outskirts of Silver Run. You see the mountains towering and forbidding as you approach. The ground has seemed arid with a sand dirt-like quality for some time. No more deep brown fertile earth as you approach. Mm -hmm. uh, but before you can reach Silver Run proper, you come across a trio of tents or lean-tos about a half mile southwest of town. Uh, by the way, the re I, I think I told you this in your in your backstory, but the reason you are the reason you are attempting to uh, you're going to Silver Run, you're trying to find a trying to find a market for that item that you have that you like to sell that got you into trouble back in. Uh, got you into trouble back in um clax okay mm -hmm. and you figure that's like a rough and tumble area maybe you'll be able to find someone there can everyone see can everyone see the, the map change that i brought about 
Um, okay. I, don't see any, I haven't seen a change yet. Did you move oh, it no? somewhere? I still uh, see the three, the three characters in between Clax and... Okay, so you, so are you, you still see the whole map of Never Shore. Is that right? Is that right, Kildor? Yes. Correct. And Category, you still see the map of Never Shore? Yes. <laughs> Even better. Even better. Excellent. That works great. Okay, great. Alton is elsewhere. Alton is, is where I, I said he was. Don't worry. You guys will get there. Oh, I see. So his Yeah, I, I've got like a... Oh, no, don't say anything. Hey, don't say anything. That's, please do not share your secrets with us. Well, you're all, oh, well, you're, well, you're, well, you're, all, you're all sitting there listening. So we're, it's fine. You know, that, that, that's, you know, there's different ways to play. But I, I wouldn't chase people out of the room unless it was really uh, vital. So, uh, all right. One second. So, Alton, you can see this map, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now I don't know if you can see because the the graphics are horrible, but there is um. I'm trying to ping here. Did you see that little ping there? Mini uh, ping. Yeah, I do. Right there. That that, that that that's a guy there. Okay? okay. Can you tell that that's a guy there? Yeah, I can. And then there's another guy up there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um. All right, you see him now. Now you're on. Now this is an actual battle map, Alton. And, and you two guys can look on his screen if you want to. I'm just going to put your character there in game yet, okay? Mm, cool. so, so this is an actual battle map. And we, and we, and we call it a battle map. Doesn't mean, doesn't mean there's actually any fighting on it. That's just what it's called. This is where each of these squares is five feet, okay? Right. Whereas on um, the main map, they, you got they're not really five feet next to each other. There. No, yeah, that's the round. They could be wherever. Yeah, but here it's actually five feet, okay? Perfect. Okay, so. Uh, Alton, you know, you're about a half a mile southwest of Silver on Proper. You come to this open clearing, kind of sandy desert-like uh, uh, terrain, and you see this one this one miner. You see these three tents here. You see this one miner-looking guy about, you know, what, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 feet away from you. And then much further back, you see another guy kind of futzing around in front of the other tent over there. Uh, you know you've got this gem that you want to want to sell. Uh, what, what do you do? Uh, do they see me? Uh, the well, uh, I'm I'm saying that you see them first. The first guy hasn't turned his head yet, but at any any moment he might. I mean, it's a pretty wide open area. All right. Um, and these are raiders, or are they just peaceful people? Uh, well, you don't know. This is your first encounter with them. Uh, you know, uh, you haven't even spoken to them yet, so you can't even get a a sense of them. But they look like uh. They look kind of poor, kind of run down, uh, but you know they, 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 they you know, for based upon where you are, you figure that, you know, they're probably miners uh, for the community or workers somehow related to the community, um, but you're too far away to get any kind of feel for them right now. You probably have to go up closer, and maybe talk to one of the guys and, and see what uh, what transpires. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna hail them and say hello. All right, tell me what you say. Greetings, fellow travelers. And you do that from over here? Uh, yeah. Well, okay. I hail the first guy. Okay. First guy looks over to you, and he looks kind of surprised and to see you there, and he kind of looks around, doesn't see anyone else. He says, oh, uh, hello, friend. Uh, what can we do for you? He's the, uh, only one that's noticed, he's the only one that's noticed you right now. The other guy back there is just kind of doing his own thing. I ask him if I can pass through unhindered. <laughs> Uh, he says, uh, unhindered, of course. We don't mean you any any harm. He says, uh, uh, where, where where are you headed, he says. And you see him kind of walk over a couple of steps this way. Uh, I tell him to Silver Run. Wait, hold on. Maybe I shouldn't. All right, I tell him to Silver Run. Silver Run, he says. Oh, okay. He says, you know, we, uh, we work there. Uh, we work there, as a matter of fact. Uh, what, uh, what takes you there, if you don't mind me asking? Um, work. I'm looking for work. Uh, looking for work. We're all looking for work, mate. What kind of work do you do? I'm a prospector. I inspect the quality of the gyms. Really? Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, you know, we've got some uh, decent prospecting equipment over here. You want, if you're looking to buy something. Ooh, uh, I say I'm good. Okay. All right. Uh, hey, fellas, he yells out uh, to his comrades. So it looks like we got a, it looks like it looks like we got a visitor. Okay. 
And this guy kind of turns and notices his friend, takes a few steps over here. Okay. And then uh, let, me see, let me see if I can do this right for once. Hold on. Let's see this right here. Now the guy here comes out of that tent. Okay. There, there was a guy there. Okay. And uh, the first Meyer steps over here and says, so what's your name, friend? Uh, I run away. I, I, I turn around. <laughs> what? You run away. You we're, we're, too close to me. No, we're, that's we're, fine. We're just... we're, 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 which way are you running? Don't run. Uh, Don't run. I'm going to run to the, so wrong. to the left. Or actually to the right. Try to get around them. What? Get behind <laughs> those bushes. What? You're going to run behind these bushes? Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, now you can run. Now, oh, oh, you know, I should have mailed you. Uh, you can run. You're a rogue. So you can do a. You can now. You know, like you can do a normal movement. Right. Or you can do a disengage. Oh, how 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 far do you want to run? Where? Ping me what box you want to run to. And that's just by holding the left click. Uh yeah. Right. Yeah, left click. Left, left click on, on, on any square, and that should ping it to me. Do you see the ping? Yeah, you want to run right there? Yeah. Hey there? Yeah, I said. I, oh, I see. It says zero. Yeah, I see that. That's good enough. You highlight the square. Yeah, yeah. You can move. You can move yourself there. Now that's that's only fifteen feet. Now, if you're gonna run, you can run. I mean, really, you could run. Now, Silver Run. It's Silver Run is like all the way to the northeast corner of this map. Okay. All right. Um, push that's. Push. That push like, is like kind of it, it's kind of like it's kind of like uh, you know thin foilage you know like no you know you know not really an obstacle really like you can get people can get through it pretty quickly it's not you know uh, yeah it's not it's not it's not quite as lush as as it looks here they can see through it but they, they probably couldn't fire anything through it now the, now they don't they don't seem to have any weapons in the sense of swords and bows and arrows and stuff. The first guy's got a pickaxe on him. The second guy's got uh, nothing that you can see. The third guy's like carrying like a little lead pipe or something. Maybe he was working on something. But right. but they don't have like proper weapons as you might say. Alright, I tell him to stop moving and I pulled out, pulled out my, my short bow. You tell, you tell him to stop moving and you pull out your short bow. Alright, the first guy says, whoa, whoa. You know, what's uh... What, 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 what's that about, friend? Well, I tell him I'm a little wary since I'm coming from Clax. He says, listen, you know, just because you're, you know, you're just because you're, you're coming from Clax. And by the way, if you see them moving at all on, on the screen, that means they're not moving them. That means they are actually moving. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, all right. Said, I, tell him one, I tell him once again to halt. Do not move or I'll fire this arrow in between your eyes. Yeah. He says, uh, first guy says, really? He says, he said, you come upon, he said, you come upon three strangers on the road, and this is the way that you react? All right, I'm going I'm to fire an arrow at the first one. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm going to fire an arrow at the first one. What? The okay. One closest to me. Put up, Jeez, okay. he's firing his feet. Don't fire at him. Okay. I'm a, okay, I'm gonna fire at his feet. No, let him know serious. These these guys are just doing yeah, their I, thing. I mean, if if, if I was redder, I would just rob them. Do a perception check to see if you can. I I I I I I I so so you so you fire an arrow at his feet. Yeah. Well, I, I okay. See, so, right, so you fire an arrow at his feet. All right, it whizzes by him. Now now roll for initiative. Okay. How do oh I do no, that? you're fighting. Remember, so you gotta Flash. open your character sheet. Okay, so let me show you how to do it. So when you go over here, so yeah. So how do I do this? The There's a the box here for initiative. You just click that. All right, cool. So what did I get? You got all right. Yeah, all right. So you see the chat box, uh, Alton? Yeah, I got six point eighteen. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah, which is the six, the eight, the point eight is the tiebreaker. All right, uh, I, I don't know if you, I don't know if, I don't know if I did it secretly or not. Were you able? Did you guys see my initiative roll for the hot? Yeah, yeah your initiative is eighteen. That's close to music. Right, I wasn't sure no, if you guys saw it. Okay. 
And why is this here? For some reason, it's showing up in the initiative box. That's annoying. But anyway, I wouldn't worry about it. Okay. All right. So uh, you fight, you fight, you fire at the uh, at the first guy's feet. Okay. Uh, he holds. He holds for a moment, and the other guys start rushing you. Okay. One, okay. two, three, um, four. So Hold on. Hold on. You got to take initiative turn. Okay. Got to go in order. The first guy, like, was taken aback, so he can't go his full movement. One, two, three. Okay. And the second guy ran up pretty close to you, and this guy, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, and you see the second guy is running towards you, takes out a knife, okay? Just like just like a just like a small knife, okay? All right, so that was the, all, right, all right, so that was their turn. Now I need you now I need you to hold on a minute now, Koji, okay? It's uh, Ryder. Uh, yeah, sorry, Ryder. Yeah, yeah that's right. I'll, I'll be doing that probably awesome. for as long as we, for as long as we play. Uh, <laughs> and now I got to talk to. You. So we're going to pause your 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 stuff there, um, Alton. All right. Kildor. Yes. Okay. After reflecting upon your epiphany at your base camp, at the foot of the mountains, way to the west, you decided that at long last it was time to take to the road again, and once again intermingle with humanity. You picked up your gear and let nature reclaim what it would, before heading east along the dusty plain at the base of the mountains. Crossing Mountain Creek, which was surprisingly polluted, and heading towards the mining community of Silver Run. After weeks of travel, you can tell that you are nearing the town, and you see the first signs of habitation a tree of tents on a sandy plain a good half mile shy of Silver Run. You begin to see human shapes in the distance, and as you get to within about 50 yards or so, perhaps closer, you see three men charging toward one individual who is holding a short bow. Okay? Uh, let me bring you onto this map. Uh, do, me a, uh, do me a favor. Drag your token out onto this map. Do you know how to do that? I, I can do that probably. All right, well, yeah, you do it then. Put yourself over there to, to, on the western edge. No, the, the, remember it's the it's the name. Right, right. Yeah, you drag that and then the Western right? ship. No, no, that's that's the box. That's yeah, that's right. You sure? All right, there, there you go. go. All right, I'm gonna move you where I want you. Hold on a second. Wait, I put myself on the eastern edge, I guess. For, oh no, no, you're, 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 you're good. You're right there. What do you do? Like no, it's not there. And then scroll over the top. And then. All right, I want to do a perception check to see if I can, uh, you know, determine. What is going on? Yeah, determine like who's, you know, is this is this an unprovoked attack or, or can I tell from the way they're moving? Um, well, the, well, that that would really be an insight an insight check. Okay, an insight check. Well, I'm, what, I, what you see is three guys running at, at this guy with weapons. You see three guys running at, the, at, at this guy very hostily. It's this guy with the bow and arrow drawn. Um, it, would be, it, would, it would be impossible for you to determine who started it. Right. I, I will run over. I will run over to the area just so that I can be ready to act. Okay, now, 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 now you can you can you can run up to sixty feet. That'd be twelve boxes. Okay, so so you know I, I'm not going to kill you guys on the boxes unless it's really really important. So just kind of get so just kind of move yourself to an appropriate position. All right, so let's see. Let me count this. So I'm going to move up behind this guy and I'm going to say, "Hey, what's going on?" Okay, the guy turns and says, "There's more of them." Okay. And he takes a swing at you with uh, with with his, with his lead pipe, okay? All right. Well, if I do, I get to roll for initiative before he strikes. Uh, or have your numbers there? Um. So you gotta press enter. Remember? Yes. All right. Roll, roll, roll. Um. Right, is this? So eighteen. Ten. 
Uh, roll a, uh, you know what? I'm not going to go for initiative. Just, just, just roll a twenty, and depending on what you roll, I'll give you. I might give you an option to, to take a dodge action. Just roll a twenty in the box. I did. Twenty. Yeah, okay. Nine. Oh no. All right. I got twenty. Yes. Uh, yeah. Critical. Oh. All right. It, 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 okay. Uh, if you want to, okay. You can you can uh, take the dodge action, and uh, it'll be harder for him to hit you right now. I I'll, I'll give you that as a reaction. Yeah, I'll I'll take the dodge action. Yeah, I'm giving it to you as, as like a, a bonus because you, you rolled the thing there. All right, all right. He's swinging at you. I'll let you. I get, these guys don't have the weapons here. I got to do it here. He rolls a fourteen, which would have missed anyway. Okay, so he swings at you with this like kind of. Kind of short, kind of rusty lead pipe, and uh, and, and he misses because you were very very alert. Okay, um, I will let you go before then the next round. Okay, let me bring up my turn order here. Those two guys took their turn. They ran at him. He had moved. All right, so it's your it's your turn, uh, Alton. You got your short bow drawn. There's this one guy who's to the left of you on a diagonal. But if you were to fire at him right now, you'd be at disadvantage because of range weapon and short notice. But you could, you could switch up to a regular melee weapon if you wish. Um, you, you guys can switch weapons automatically. I'm not going to say you used up any type of uh, meaningful movement with that. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up my melee weapon. What do I have? All right. Short sword or rapier? Look at your character sheet. Yeah, look at your character sheet and you see what items you have. I'm not <clears throat> oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, right, I'm gonna pull up my rapier. Okay, pull out your rapier and then for your you're gonna try to stand uh you can attack this guy right there as closest to you? Yeah. Alright, so from your character sheet, click on the rapier. Uh Koji, show him how to do that. All right, Ryder, click on it. Yeah, it's all code to show Ryder how to do it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And then it'll show it'll show up in the chat box. Okay, there you go. All right, all right. So you see what happened there, Alton? See yeah, you, you, yeah. So basically, what happens is like if you're gonna do any type of attack, you click it from your character sheet, and it automatically shows up in the chat box. Okay. Now it get, now it give it gives you two numbers. Okay. Mm -hmm. We always use the first number unless. You're at advantage or disadvantage. I don't know if you guys know the advantage. You, do, do they? Do they? Good. Do you guys play advantage and disadvantage, Dennis, or no? I I use it in a couple of encounters, but advantage kind of means like you surprise them and you have the and they, well, they, you have. Yeah. Well, they're, 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 yeah, there can be there can be various reasons for advantage. It could be because of a spell or a special action that the character has, or 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 the terrain or whatever. But or surprise, like you said. But anyway, um, there's also going to be disadvantage. Um, so it, the, the computer here, roll 20, automatically rolls twice in case there's advantage or disadvantage. But we only take the first number. We only worry about the both numbers if there's advantage or disadvantage. So in this case, you rolled a 17. And I see your brother told you that if you click on the item, uh, you get the damage, right? Okay. So, okay. So you take your rapier, okay, and you attack this miner who's coming at you with a knife. Okay, and you do seven points of damage. Now, this is something that's to do in the online in the online games. I don't know if you guys are into it or not. It's up to you. I don't. I don't care. Would you like to describe how you killed this miner? Yeah, I did. I, I would. I would like to describe it. Please do. All right. So I pulled out my rapier with extreme swiftness, and I thrust at his neck. In this soft part of. His neck, his eyes. Okay, so, all right. So this guy, he's out of commission. It's over for him. Okay. Right. Uh, now the now his now they go his partner. Uh, I, I need you guys to hold on about two minutes. My wife is doing something for me, and it's hindering my mouse movement. Right Love in the it. middle of combat. Love it. Uh, I'm at, oh, I'm at, I think of a window here. Okay, this guy continues running running towards you. He's got the, uh, he's got a pickaxe, and he means to give you the business end of it. What's your armor class, Koji? 
Uh, Alton, sorry, who's Ryder? Uh, it's not going to matter. He, it's not going to matter. He, he rolled an eight. He, he rolled. He, right. I think my, my armor is what I'm trying to go. By the way, I found, I found, I found something fun. Oh, 15. 15. Okay. Uh, yeah. 15. Yep. By the way, I, I found something fun I could do when I was trying to, to solo practice for this, Dennis. Right? Mm -hmm. Cool. Tell me. There it is. You see on the screen now? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, it can be some espresso if you go down. All right, so he, he misses you. Okay. Uh, then the guy over here, Dennis, gets a shot. A sh oh, you dodged him last time. I'll give you the shot now. What do you want to do, Dennis? Oh, sorry. What do you want to do, uh, Kildor? I will pull out my uh, one handed quarterstaff and I want to hit him upside the head. I don't want to, I'm not trying to go for a killing blow. I'm trying to uh, knock, him out. knock him out. I want to talk. I want to ask him what's going on here. If I can oh, do a non-lethal blow, I would like to. You, you know, that, that's my fault, uh, Alton. I didn't give you the option to to be non-lethal. I got the impression that you weren't going for non-lethal. Yeah, no, I don't think I would have gone for non-lethal. Espresso. Okay, I would have retconned it if you wanted. One second, guys. All right, Dennis, go ahead. Go ahead and attack. Go ahead and attack with that weapon for non-lethal. Okay, so. And here we go. Regular coffee. I'm actually going to use the use the use it with two hands, but again, non-lethal if I can. Upside the top of the head. Okay. Twenty-three hits. It's it hits pretty uh hits pretty severely. And then, and then, kinda, oh, that's, hold on a second. More coffee. Stay here like stay here like two two, two three minutes. Press the X. You got to click. Got to click the the word itself. Got it. On there, and you, you should show. Well, yeah, there you go. And then you can click the course that's two-handed, and that's how much damage. Yeah, but 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 but, but oh. yeah. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, yeah but but but. All right, all right, but, but yeah, you know you know that all you have for damage. For damage, all you gotta do is click it in the chat box. You know that, right? Right. Coach just showed me that, so that's perfect. Yeah, yeah, not on not on your character sheet, but in the, in the chat box, right? Okay. Yes. All right, so you. Would you like to do, would you would you like to describe how you how you uh, I, 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 you I, I you slammed his skull but you 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 saw a wide open, you saw a wide open spot and you knew that you could pull up just enough to not kill him and you were successful yes, I, in not killing him so you would like to describe how you knocked him out yes after spinning around and dodging his blow I turn around and backhanded him with both hands on the temple. But as I noticed it hit, I pulled up just a little bit so that I wouldn't what knock his head off. <laughs> it wouldn't totally crack open his skull. So One hopefully second, he has he has collapsed. One second, guys. Espresso. You get ready to leave the room. Uh, so I, yeah, so I, I, I had to find something instead of skull and crossbones for knocking a guy out. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's dead. Because um, okay, so if you look over here, he did seven piercing, and that killed the miner. Right, and that's I eleven did, bludgeons. I pulled up a little bit. Just oh, keep okay. Going. So at the least, brain damage. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully you'll be able to speak afterwards. You might not be able to. Whoa. Well, there's well, one thing about the game. There's a ton of there's some nuts, please. A ton of dungeon master discretion, which I'm very big on. So. Even though the even though like I see that uh, code, you look at the math there, at the dungeon match, he told me he was trying to pull up. He rolled a high number. Said, "All right, fine. I'll give you. I'll I'll, I'll see you that you were successful." Okay. So he gets knocked unconscious at a minimum. We'll see. Okay. And now it is uh it is Alton's turn. And there's a guy. There's a dead guy to your left. The guy right in front of you. He just took a whack at you with his pickaxe, but uh, was found wanting in the accuracy department. Um, I'm gonna try to subdue this guy too instead of uh, stabbing their neck. Um, okay. Yeah, you yeah you could you could still try to stab him, and try to like not kill him, or you could try to to grapple him or grab him. Yeah, I'm gonna try to grab him, like rush him, and then try to disarm him. All right. What's your strength? My strength is. I just go to your character sheet and click on strength. 15. It's a straight. It's a straight 15? strength challenge. All right. Thir Thirteen. All right, just click on strength from, from, from the character sheet. 
You did already. No, I did mine. Oh, I see. But he did his right above yours on my screen. Oh, I see it. Okay. Oh, yeah. So there you go. Yeah. You only do it once, not twice. But all right. So you uh, you successfully disarm this guy. All right. And you uh, gain control of him in a MMA style wrestling maneuver. Uh, you've got control of his body. Yeah, what, do you, what, do you, what do you do to him? I'm going to try to choke him out. Jesus. All right. So you want, do you want him unconscious or you just want to get control of him completely? Uh, I, want, I want him unconscious. You want him unconscious? Okay. All right. You successfully uh, you successfully choke him out, and he's unconscious. And you feel him go limp in, 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 your, in, your, in your mighty grip. All right. Now, now their turn is over. <laughs> Kildor, uh, you just knocked this guy unconscious. You see this young man over here across from you. Kind of rough and tumble young guy. Just stabbed the guy through the throat with the neck, uh, through the throat, killing him. And then uh, disarmed the other guy quite skillfully and, and, and dexterously and uh, choked him out in an MMA style hold, threatening him unconscious. This is the guy, remember, remember when you came on, these three guys, they were running at this guy, charging at him, attacking him. So uh, what, do you, what, what, what do you do? So I take some rope out and I tie, tie the guy out and I. Go over to uh, look over at um, Alton, and I say, uh, "What's going on here? Why were these guys trying to attack you?" Alton. They were attempting to rob me. I see. So let's 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 uh, tie him back up so we can ask. I can get their side of the story when they wake up. Now, now, by, now by the way, uh, uh, one thing that I picked up is some other DMs that are like. Whenever someone is telling you something, you can always do an inside check to try to, or often do an inside check, then always to try to get a feel for whether you think they're being truthful or not. All right, I'll do that just to see if I can trust what this Alton character says. His knives look awful sharp. I mean, I mean, you guys wouldn't know each other's names because you didn't ask. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's just telling me I have character also, but I know what he's saying. Yeah, but yes, but uh, but Cadgar is certainly right. So from your character sheet, Dennis, just click on insight. So, uh, 15, okay. Uh, so you get the feeling that, you know, I don't know, these three guys are rushing this guy, but maybe there's a little more to the story than, than he's letting on. You know, maybe he's not lying, but maybe he's not telling you the whole, the whole, the whole, the whole, the whole, uh, truth either. All right. Well, back where these guys were coming from, what's, what's the lay of the land there? Like, can I, can, can I drag, after I tie my guy up, can I drag him back over? I, 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 so you so you tied up you, so as you're tying up your guy you you talk to this stranger whose name you don't know yet and uh, you, you ask him your question and you, and you got the feeling that you know you're not sure he's telling you the hundred percent the truth uh, let me give Alton a crack what do you do now Alton um you got a dead guy at your feet you got another guy you choked out and you got this this guy over here who knocked this other miner unconscious otherwise you don't know anything about him. I'm gonna I'm gonna tie my guy up with uh, Kildare's Kildor's guy, just to make okay. sure I don't try to do anything. All right, so you, so you see him. Uh, so Kildor, you see this uh, young man dragging the body over his, his unconscious guy towards your guy, and he starts tying him up next to your guy without even asking. What do you what do you, what what do, you, what do you say? What do you do? What's your name? Alton uh, Alton Hero. And where, where, where do you come from, Alton? I come from the big city of Klax. What's your name? I am Kildor Rayson. And I'm from, what's the name of my town? R uh, River? And it's, uh, the Rise? The Rise? No, no. Where, where well, the, well, 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 once you said Rayson, you're, you're, you're immediately from House Rayson, which, House Rayson, which he knows is north of Klax. Uh, Alton, as soon as he says his last name, Rayson, you know, you might you know you might ask him of of house racing. Yeah, house racing, of course. So you know right away, Alton, that that means that this guy that I mean the racings, they're very wealthy. They're known throughout all the realm. 
Uh, they've got the only large, noticeable, large, notable castle outside of uh, Clax. Uh, they're kind of, you know, suspiciously viewed by a lot of the public. People don't know what to make of them. They, they seem gregarious and pleasant in person, but uh, also rumors uh, of, of some deep family secret, and, and they tend to be not welcoming of outsiders into their castle. Even people who marry into the family are said to kind of be kept at arm's length, but yet they do some good works throughout the realm. So there's there's a lot of mixed view, opinions of them, but you know he comes from money and uh, kind of a big shot. And you're kind of surprised to see him coming what along here, look, right, looking, right. Kind of, looking kind of scruffly and scraggly and showing up outside of uh, Silver Run all by himself. What's what's going on? What's up with that? Yeah. Well, let me let me just amend my answer. So when he says of house racing, I'll say yes, but I'm not really close with my family. Right. All right. Well, I ask him, ask him what brings him all the way over here. I needed some solitude, some time to reflect on things and get away from the violence of this world. To show you more. <laughs> so I want to drag my. I want to drag as after that. If the I want to drag my guy up. I want to see what what these guys were doing. What were what? they working on? All right. I, I, put your uh, put put your put your token where you want to put it, uh, Kildor. And I'll and I'll, and I'll, I'll see now. See now, now the two guys are tied together. So you got to drag both of them. Uh, uh, Alton, you to give him a hand. He's he trying to drag his his guy that you've tied your guy to. I would just leave him there. And I, well, I, I want to look around what, what's going on here. Oh, you can leave them tied up back where they were. Okay. No, wait, we'll move them over here just in case. We want to be, I want them close when they wake up. Okay. Wait, Alton, right, you, right, Alton, right, did you give me Oh, Alton. move your token. You have to click that, then move your token. Right. It says right there, you measure the distance between them. I'm going to lose their cam. Well, hold on a minute. Alton, Alton, did you do did, oh, yeah. did you give me? Did you give me a hand? With, did, did you give me a hand with the dragon? The, the dragon, Alton, or you let, you let him do it himself? I got, I got it myself. No, I'm saying, did, did you let him do the dragging himself, or, or did you give him a hand with it? He was, uh, he was trying to drag. All right, and then you said you wanted to come back here. All right, so give me a hand with that, and uh, so you're up there for now, okay? And I'll, I'll before I know you just told me you wanted to do, but I'm going to give Kildor his action first, okay? Uh, all right, Kildor, so you, what, what do you want? You want to look in that tent? Yeah, I want to do a perception check to see if I can ascertain what exactly they were doing, what they were working on. And, okay, and yes, well, in the tent. okay uh, you can do a perception check just to get a sense of the area, then I'll tell you what's in the tent. So do give me a perception check, please. Do right, Cat we're going to get to you. This is one of the early parts where you guys are separate for a while, but once you guys get together, there won't be any separating. So let me click on perception. Oh, no. Hmm. Maybe your real life perception is too low. It must be what it is. Oh, well, I see. Never mind. I click here. Okay. Okay. Uh, there doesn't seem to be anything like terribly unusual in the area. You know, you do notice off to the northwest there's kind of a slope up towards like a, a, a plateau that tends to lead up towards the mountains. Kind of off the map, not very far is the, is, is the mountain range. Okay. Um, you look inside the tent, and it's just kind of a, you know, kind of a poor worker's tent, uh, kind of a, an itinerant, uh, maybe traveler type of uh, a place. Really nothing there worth getting too excited about. Uh, he's got the pickaxe there, some miners' tools, stuff like that. Alton, what do you do? Um, you said you wanted to loot the other, you wanted to rummage through the other tent? Yeah, I think I'll search this. All right, all right move your character. Are you, all right. Uh, you, you go through the tent, same thing. You know, uh, these guys didn't have a lot of money. You know, uh, there's just, you know, poor clothes, kind of a lean-to, uh, you know, pickaxe in there too, some mining equipment. But, uh, you know, these guys were pretty, these guys were pretty poor and uh, don't, don't really have much, uh, don't have any, anything that you really we, we even want. There's really nothing even worth carrying out of there. You know, don't go off the map. It's instant death. <laughs> no, no, it's not instant death, but I'm just saying they'll go off the map. So I can tell you right now that whoever whoever checks out the other tent finds the same thing. So, um, you know, okay. So now uh, what do you guys want to do now? You got these guys unconscious. It might be a little bit before they, they come to. There's anything else in the, in, the, anything else in the immediate area. 
you could try and uh, maybe uh, bring them to consciousness if you want to smack them around or throw some water on them or whatever. I'll, put, I'll pour water on one of the guys and slap his face a little bit and say, hey, wake up. The one that I hit, maybe. Okay. Or, or actually, the one that, if uh, that means he has no damage and he just got choked out, he should wake up sooner. So I'll go for the, the choked out guy. All right, move your square down one day. That's because that's the one I'm saying was choked out. Okay, so you, uh, so you, you pour water on me. He comes to, and he's like, uh, 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 uh. He's, he's, he's suddenly like kind of yells, ah. Uh. He's like scared. Okay, so um, let's see. Um, uh, you know, let me see. What's your intimidation? Just curious. What's your intimidation or can you just use persuasion to oh persuasion oh you're the one that has all this stuff never mind um so i'll i'll use um let's see i'm going to use persuasion and talk to him and just say you know what what were you guys doing here why did you attack him are, are you trying to be kind of friendly and nice to the guys are you telling me yeah good cop bad cop i'm a good cop all right so i i i so what are you asking again so, what are you guys doing out here, and what in the world prompted you to attack uh, a lone traveler? Uh, he, he, you see him look to his left over at Alton. Alton, as this is going on, you, you see the guys coming to him to talk, and, and he's looking scared. He says, he says, that guy, he says, that guy shot at us. He says, well, indicating Alton. What are you guys doing out here? We're 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 miners. He said, "We we we uh we're looking to 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 work in the silver run. We we you know the work's been hard to come by, but you know uh, that, that's all that was happening. I I swear he says. Now you can do an inside check to see if you th yeah. how truthfully think he's being. This guy's been this guy's robbed people before. Uh, let's do an inside check to see if I can ascertain that. And twenty two, you can tell that. Oddly, very similar to when you questioned Alton earlier, he's not 100% lying. He's not 100% telling the truth. He's not. He's kind of not. There's a little bit of truth to what he says, but he's not giving you the whole story either. Um, so both. So maybe both these guys weren't 100% in the right or 100% in the wrong. Meaning this minor and, of course, Mr. Alton. Man, it's a lot. Of, so tough place to be in. I know. Um, Maybe we should just let him go. With him, we're leaving a dead body behind, and you know, just at a, just from a background standpoint, what is it? How how is this world looked at when somebody, you know, is involved in combat and they wind up dead? Is there is there like murder charges? Okay. Is there just like looked at like it's fair game? Okay. What, all right. All right. Uh, uh, sure. Of course. Excellent question. By the way. Uh, so it, it so it's it's kind of a medievally environment, okay. Uh, not too many lords around though. There's really no, not, none of that outside of house racing. Really, there's some lesser lords and stuff who own land, but nothing like along the line of what you expect a fully developed feudal society to have. Really, the only police force is kind of in clax is something called the town guard, which kind of walks around and keeps the peace. But there's not really a uh, you know, they kind of a arrest people who they think are guilty and there's not really like due process of law, that type of thing. Out in the rural areas, there's really no set form of justice. There's like a traveling uh, sheriff, like judge sheriff to travel around and kind of try cases a couple of times a year. Um, but generally, Never Shore is a pretty peaceful realm. There's generally not much crime, okay? Uh, outside of petty crime and stuff like that, okay? Uh, although uh, these three guys did seem like they were up to no no good. Uh, Alton may have noticed there was a guy sneaking around that tent on the left as he was talking uh, to the guys before the, before he fired his, his arrow at them. Uh, um, murder is murder, certainly. So, you know, murdering someone is, you know, you killed someone because you wanted to kill them. Now, getting to a fight and killing someone, well, then it becomes more of like, uh, well, well, you know, that's different. Those are different circumstances. You know, that's more, that's kind of more understandable. Well, look, they got into a fight, things got out of hand, somebody got killed, you know, well, that's kind of the way it goes. Like, that's not really considered, uh, that's not considered that bad. There's not really manslaughter, okay? But but there is, but, you know, but if you just kill someone for the heck of it, for no reason, there is murder. You know what I'm saying? Of course, there's no one around right now. 
Um, I press him a little bit. I, I bring out my staff. I kind of try to intimidate him, um, which I have terrible. Well, no, I have okay charisma. I, I'm just trying to tell him. The, the, I the, want the, to know, the way, I the, know the what way, you're hiding. The way, the, way, the way that I play regarding interrogation is, is you know, look, if you've got weapons and the guy is, is helpless, you can be pretty intimidating. Intimidating. I don't care what your in-game intimidation score, <laughs> intimidation, right. intimidation score is. So that's kind of the way that I do that. Unfortunately, I found that I, that means that I, I'm promoting torture, which I don't mean to, but I guess that's the way it goes. <laughs> well, it, it, it is the medieval setting. I right, should take out the staff, okay? And what do you do? I say, I, I want you to tell me what you're hiding. I say, you're not telling me the whole story. Look at your friend over there, and I point to the dead guy. I said, do you want to wind up like him? Now, Alton, have you maneuvered behind this guy? Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, you see the guy. You see the guy looking over his shoulder, looking back at, at Alton. He seems a lot more worried about Alton than he's worried about your staff. <laughs> Fair enough. He's like, uh, look, I said, I, I, I don't know, I don't know what you want me to tell you. We're out here working. You, you see, we got the mining equipment. This guy comes along, and he just starts launching arrows like he wants to kill everybody. You know. Uh, Before he can even know, get through his sentence, I'm going to whack him upside the head with the staff. <laughs> oh, he goes. Okay, he gets whacked in that. Oh. Speak plainly. He goes, what is wrong with you guys? <laughs> I want to know what you're hiding. We're not hiding anything. What, you're what, what, not what? telling me the whole truth. And I whack him again. <laughs> <laughs> you, whack, you whack him again across the face and some blood starts to trickle out of his mouth. and He's kind of tasting it, kind of biting his tongue a little bit. He's like, well, so what do you want to know? Yeah, what are you doing out here? What are you mining for? We don't mine here. We mine in the, we, we mine in the mountains in town, you idiot. He says to you. Oh, whack him upside the head. <laughs> Watch your mouth. Or I'll have him choke yeah, you out again. He, now, he's becoming, now he's becoming very groggy. And you realize that if you continue this, he'll be rendered unconscious again momentarily. All right. Well, maybe your friend will be more forthcoming. And I whack him again to knock him out. <laughs> All right, he's, he's knocked out again. <laughs> All right, so then I go to wake up the other guy. Okay, which is the top, that's a, which is the top guy. That was so it's the top guy now. Uh, now that, that was the second guy he was doing Alton. So it's the top guy. All right, so so you. Well, before before I go to wake him up, I go to Alton. What is your sense of these guys? What, why did why? I mean, first of all. Did you shoot at them? And why? Where I don't see any arrows stuck in them. I, I look around. Well, 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 well there, there, there's an arrow far off laying in the in the in the, in the, in the, in the, in the sand way back. Just an arrow like that. He missed a shot. That's all. That was a warning arrow. They were getting pretty aggressive. So you, I, th I take it you look like a skillful bowman. So you weren't shooting to kill. No, I was not. All right. I just get the feeling that they're hiding something. You you, you could do another you could do that. you could do another inside check to see if you think he's telling the truth about that. Yeah, let's do that. Well, maybe I should just get going now to sell my gym. Hold on a second. Let me get my inside thing here going. Are you all twelve? You get you get a pretty good feeling. That he's being truthful. That he that he did not shoot that arrow to kill. All right. Well, I tell him, well, you can't regulate stupid. And if something like this happened, I guess it was bound to happen. You know, my it, not not to say it is what it is. There has to be a. This is this is the way of things. I tell him, this is the way of things in in. Uh, never in, sure. Uh, never sure. Oh. Uh, I I let him know that. Uh, I was heading out here to go to Silver Run, and that I should get going again. Well, do you want some? Do you want some company? It seems like these parts are more dangerous than I remember. Uh, I let him. Uh, what's your purpose up here? Did you clear your head, like you said? I'm oh. just a wanderer. I'm I'm trying to find a greater purpose in life, and I like to walk around, get into adventures, and you know, use my staff. 
upside somebody's up, up, upside some bad guy's head. I'm looking to restore order and connect with nature. No man, I, I think my character wouldn't like to travel with somebody who's barely met. So I say it seems like you might be carrying something valuable. Maybe you need someone to accompany you. Uh, I let him know. I'm I do. Right. I do a persuasion roll to see if I can persuade him. I say I, 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 I'm more of a loan. Well, let's, let's see. Alone. Let's see how you respond to my roll here. Check out my my persuasion. Let's see what happens. <laughs> you guys are due for a bad roll. Twenty-one. Oh, you, 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 you know, you, you know, you know, Walton. You say you, you know, you're like you know. I was thinking I should be a loner. I was thinking I should I should head into town myself. I don't know. This guy, he pretty he whacked those guys pretty good with that quarter staff. He seems like he's pretty he's otherwise like kind of harmless. I don't know. Maybe it might be good to have a guy like that on my back. That's what goes through your head, which surprises you because usually you would like to be a loner. Now it's up to you. You can still say no thanks, but no thanks, or you could take him up on his offer to accompany you into town. I'd take him up on his offer. Okay. So how uh, far am I from the town? Like a day or? Uh, no, you guys. No, you guys are only about a half a mile from the town. Oh, all right. Then, yeah. Sure. Um, now you've got a dead body laying over here, and you've got two guys tied up and unconscious. Um, so what are you guys going to do right now? Are you guys going to walk to town and leave them here, or what are you going to do? Well, I think we need to. Um, guys, um, I think we need to. Um, what do we need to do? We just leave them. They're going to come into town and, and tell them all about you. You can't kill them, though. That's Maybe if we threaten wow. them enough, they'll be scared. Too scared, too. Well, hmm. They're going to go over there to um, Silver Run, and they're going to tell everyone that you are murderers. And therefore, you'll you'll be blocked from Silver Run or whatever. Oh, yeah. Just we, kill them. We wait. We're, I'll, I'll tell you. I think we need to wake these guys up. And... Uh, Convince them that they're lucky we didn't do worse to them, and then we'll then we'll be on our way. What do you think? Let me. I'm just kidding. Uh, let me see. We're just we can just kill them. It'll be over. No, nah, never mind. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we come over. Um, so we untie them first. Put my okay. rope back in my my satchel. Pour some water on their faces. Okay. By the by, they, they they don't have the the uh, the makeshift weapons that before they they drop to the dirt after you guys uh, after after you guys uh, knocked them out. Right. Are you? Uh, are you? I see. I see you, you. You pour water. Them. They they both wake up. The one guy has been knocked out twice now. Really seems uh, a little uh, a little a little out of it. The other guy uh, doesn't uh, has seen better days as well. But they seem to be alert enough to know what, what's going on. To be able to follow what you're putting down. I say, listen, you two. I saw what I saw, and you guys were the aggressors. So, unfortunately, your friend wound up dead. We're gonna, we're, we are going to leave you now. But I suggest that you watch. You come to, you come to an understanding of, of controlling yourself. And treat others with with more kindness, and not with the backside of your pipe. I'll, I'll pull up my my knife and I cut off one of their fingers. No, what are you <laughs> doing? <laughs> Let them know that that it could have been way worse. Oh, I, cut out each of their I say no, stop, stop. You can't uh, uh, me this. They suffered, uh, they suffered uh, enough. Uh, uh, okay, so also all you took you took out your dagger. Yeah, okay, all right, you you reached for the finger on which one? The, the south guy or the north guy? The south guy. All right, he was, he's not fishing, by the way. Uh, um, Tildor, you see him doing that. What do you do when she does that? All right, I try to grab his hand and say, "Stop." Are you, okay, so you grab his hand and say, "Stop." Alton, what do you do when he grabs your hand? I'm gonna, gra I'm gonna grapple. Let me see if I can grapple. No, you don't have to grapple. You, no, I, no, I, you, you grabbed his hand successfully. You grabbed his wrist okay. successfully. Uh, Alton, what do you do when he, when he, after he grabs your wrist? Um, it's time to stop. And I also. What here, I look at the uh, I look at the guy and I say, "You're lucky here that my my uh, my companions not letting me cut off your, your hand." The guy says, "Yes, absolutely. You guys, no, thank you so much. No, no, please, no, please, no, no more. We have, we've had enough. I, I understand. We we shouldn't have rushed you. We were totally in the wrong. It was our fault. I've learned my lesson. 
I'm sure my friend Raleigh has you too, right? Raleigh Raleigh says, yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> well, stay stay far away from us in the future. He said, believe me, believe me, absolutely. We're, 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 we're definitely stay far away from you guys. No problem. And and I also, um, I, you know, because you said the second language was TBD, but um, I saw in the player's handbook there's something called a thief's cant. I thought maybe that would be cool if I had picked that up as a second language. So you can speak to your your uh, somebody else that knows that without other people realizing that you're communicating. Uh, so what's that, the, that well, well, let's uh, let's think about that. Let me think about that. Okay. Let's not incorporate that today. Maybe there'll okay, something okay. come something come to you in your sleep before next session, possibly. <laughs> perfect, perfect. All right. So I said. All right. Uh, All right so what do you guys do? So what do you guys do now? We get we get on our way towards. Um, all right, all right, move uh, yourself to the, move yourself to the northeast corner of this map. Alton, you wanted to do something? Uh, I uh, untie some of the rope and keep it. I'm well, we already did. Out. I already untied them both before all we right. did it. Put pack, yeah. pack the rope away. You've got, you've got all your stuff. Alton, you can reclaim your one arrow if you wish. And then make you up to the top right of the map. Okay. All right, my apologies to Koji because th th there's a lot of stuff with them early before you get into, into it. I did not oh, think no, that... I, 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 I was... I, I was enjoying myself listening to their adventures. <laughs> okay, so yeah, this is still more to go with them. Okay, I was, I was, I thought I was not expecting that. I thought we we get to that one a little faster, but that happens. But it's, it, that's good. I like that type of stuff. So uh, good, good, good scene there. Okay, all right. So now, so you guys leave these two guys there. They're frightened. You know, uh, you suspect at least one of them wet himself when you were threatening them <laughs> there at the end. Okay, and uh, you guys um, walk. It's about only about a half a mile. By the way, this all happened a little bit before noon. All right, so it's about twelve thirty or so, and, and you walk that half mile, uh, and you come to Silver Run proper. Okay, um, and I'm going to bring up what is not maybe a legitimate map too much, but uh, let's see what happens here. I'll let, okay, I'll I'll, I'll let uh, I'll let everyone get a look at this thing here. Uh, Let's get Koji on here. Oh, nice. That's the mine? Silver Run? That's the town, yeah. Yeah, Silver Run. <laughs> all right, well, can all three of you guys see that map now or no? Yes, yes. yes. All right, this is not 100% accurate, okay? So don't hold me to this, okay? Uh, oh, Ryder, like, uh, uh, Alton does not have that map up. Just me and me and, uh, me and uh, Katgar. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, hey, yeah, this is good. You know, I'm going to let you go for it. This is funny. Well, let me drag it up there. How about he deletes his guy? Click it and delete it. I'll delete this guy. Hold on. Okay. I wonder if I could drag him from one to the other. Oh, that works. Okay. Yeah, he should have it now, right? Yep. Yeah, I do. Okay. All right. Yeah, so don't hold me to this map. But like, I'll, I'll, what I'll do is I'll find some. There's a lot of, like, free stuff out there that, that other players do. So I'll find stuff that like is close enough for my sake and I'll, I'll kind of throw it up there so we have something to look at. Okay. All right. So this is so like don't hold me to like all these things being exactly what it says here or whatever. But just to get on here. And these are kind of okay. All right. So you two guys yeah, have to walk on maybe maybe 30 minutes after uh after you know a nice walk to wind down from the uh, late morning uh, activities. Uh you guys come to uh the exterior of Silver Run, okay, which is uh, the town that you were heading to for your separate reasons, okay. Uh, you see a few tents ringing the exterior of what looks like it is a more settled community if you were to follow any of the dirt roads further into town. Uh, a couple of stores in, you encounter a street food vendor and his, and his assistant. His assistant is grilling some uh, what look like some meat kebabs. They're selling glasses of lemonade and, and meat on a stick. Okay? What are, uh, I hear a lot of noise. I can't talk. What was that? 
I just rolling someone up playing Scra- back, so stop eating. Someone Go playing ahead. someone playing Scrabble? Okay. No. Um Okay, you, you, a couple of sto- a couple of stories in. You encounter a uh, street food vendor and his assistant uh, selling glasses of laminated meat on a stick. It's twenty five silver pieces for the combo, by the way. Beef ke- beef kebab and uh, uh, and the uh, uh, glass of lemonade. Uh, and he calls. Says, "Oh, hello, strange friends. How are you doing today?" We call back to. Oh, I call back to him. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. You? Why not you? Uh, yes. Uh, do. Doing- do, doing very well. It's pretty hot out, isn't it? He says. Yeah, it, it, it's, have some it's, of that, uh, it's, oh well, absolutely, sir. It'd be ten silver pieces for the lemonade, or twenty-five for the uh, beef kebab uh, lemonade combo. All right, I, I I'll, I'll fork down for that. I'm, I'm sure we haven't eaten since uh, we left the miners. Since morning. Before. That's right. Yeah. And you only have you only have your and you have your rations on you, which would be hardtack and dried nuts and uh, dried nuts and berries. You, this beef kebab and lemonade looks pretty good. Especially to Alton after a fresh kill, okay. Uh, so he says, okay, uh, "I tell him that I'll I'll I'll, put, I'll pick one for both of us." Now, I put down the fifty silver pieces. I saw it. I saw it. Okay. It says, it says it was well done. So it was good to see two friends traveling together. He says, "So where so where are you two coming from?" I'm coming from the uh, what is that area called? Where I'm at? I'm not I wasn't at. The, at my house, I was at the. In the mountains, uh, you, 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 yeah, you were camping out to the west at the base of the mountains. So I spent the last last few weeks uh, just camping out and enjoying the uh, the wonder the wonders of Never Shores Wilderness. And he looks to you and he says, "How about you, you young sir?" And then you notice that he happens to be looking down at your weapons, Alton, and uh, you notice that while you did wipe off your rapier. There does seem to be a few drops of blood on it, and he seems to notice it, and he suddenly gets very nervous. And he says, uh, listen, uh, you guys are new in town. Why don't you just enjoy these kebabs in the house? And he pushes your 50 silver pieces back towards you on the, uh, on the, on the, on the counter, Dennis. We don't want to get a reputation as troublemakers, so just let him know maybe we're some slaughtering some cow or something. Well, human. We we ran into a wild man eating cow on the way into town. No, um, I said no. That's quite all right. You know, we're we're happy to support the local businesses here. Oh, so thank, 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 thank you very much, sir. If if you guys head straight down the main road, uh, you'll find the Great Rock Inn, food lodging, whatever you'd like, all kinds of entertainment. Uh, just head straight down that way, and uh, you know, go ahead and be on your way, and have a good day. He says. He points down the road to the to to uh, straight ahead. So why I. Pick up my lemonade and kebab and eat it as we're walking. I do as well, and I thank you for paying for such a wonderful meal. My pleasure. Okay. You might want to wipe off that blade. People might get the wrong idea. All right, I, I, I clean up my blade. Okay. Up my That's right. So as you're walking away, the vendor watches you clean your blade. Uh, you look back. He looks pretty, pretty nervous, pretty petrified. Okay. You're going. You're walking down this. This. Uh, I can't. I can't paint too easily, but uh, this sort of central road. You know what I'm saying? Going towards like uh, where I just pinged, and then you got the coppersmith, the blacksmith, and then you see the inn down there. Do you see that the inn kind of right in the center? Yeah. So we, ha- I, okay. let's, I say let's yeah. uh, let's head to yeah, the inn. It. Let's see what's up. All right. So you guys head down there. You head to the, you head you head to the uh, the great inn. Okay. Uh, and uh, you you guys walk in there. As you walk down the town, you know you see this. You know, as you get more to the center of town, there's some buildings that look like they've been there a little longer. Uh, some people have built houses, mostly wood houses, maybe a couple of stone structures. Um, you see these uh, sort of like tall stone silo things, silo things around in a few places and stuff like that. Uh, almost all men in town, uh, not really a, kind of a, a worker's place, not really a, a family type of place. Okay. And you come to the inn. Do you go into the inn? Yes. Sure. All right. You go into the inn. Uh, uh, you guys get you come uh, you see a, a, a young woman behind the counter uh, you see some uh, some circular table spread out a couple of guys are playing poker uh, you see what looks like a bar uh, you can pull up and get a drink if you'd like uh, what do you guys do we're satisfied but we'll, we'll grab I said let's grab let's grab a beer and just relax a little bit and see what's going on here all, all right, right. see so you, you go to the counter uh, there's a bartender there you order your beer you sit down and finally, let me let me switch to Cadgar now for a little while, okay? Are you there, Cadgar? Yes. I'm here. 
Okay. All right. So Kadgar. Let me uh, let me do this. What color is your character? Purple. What the hell is purple? Let's see if I got the right guy. Uh, Kadgar, what 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 map do you see right now? I see the map that where um, uh, Alton just killed that one guy. Okay, great. Okay, can you put your all right? Can you can you put your uh, token uh, about one square south of that guy, please? Of the dead guy. Yes. Let me know when you got it. All right, there you go. All right, Cadgar. Finally, by the way, this is brother. This is brother Cahill. You're traveling companion kind of like a priest from the from the lords of destiny okay okay uh Kadgar, finally after three days of uncomfortably sharing a horse with brother cahill you, re you reach the you reach the outskirts of silver run early in the afternoon somewhere some miles back you noticed that the terrain had changed the earth was no longer brown and fertile but semi-arid you reach a sandy clearing and you see three tents fairly well spaced out but much to your surprise and alarm, you see a dead body laying on the ground, and you see two men uh, looking we're very weary and forlorn, and they seem to be hurriedly packing up uh, everything that is inside uh, their tents. There are three tents here, and these two men are by the other two. Uh, what do you do? I'm going to approach um, uh, one of the men. And ask him what happened exactly. All right, all right. I've dragged your character up next to the guy that you want to talk to. Right. Brother Cahill is within earshot, but he's kind of examining the dead guy. The uh, dead guy. You ask him. Uh, you ask him what happened. Uh, he sees you coming, and uh, now I should say also, I, I didn't send this to you, but there is an emblem. There is an emblem. And a symbol of the uh, Lords of Destiny that my brother created. All right, because uh, you guys, you guys are actually uh, participating. You're adventuring the same world that my brother and family are. Okay, but you're in a different part of it. So uh, they know of the Lords of Destiny, and uh, there's been an NPC that they've been uh, playing alongside, who's from the Lords of Destiny. Uh, so I'll make sure to send that all to you for the nice, nice little like uh, knickknacks or Easter eggs or whatever you want, you want to call it. Um, so you, what do you ask him again? Um, I asked him what happened. Exactly. He said, "Please, please, sir. We don't mean any. We don't mean you any any trouble. We've had enough enough problems with strangers today." But then he notices that uh, around your neck you're wearing this amulet of the Lords of Destiny and knows that you're probably a religious man. And he says, "Are you, are you from the Lords of Destiny?" Uh, I reply, saying, "Yes." I am. He said, well, we are just, we, he said, well, we are just three, now two innocent miners. He said, this young lad came along not an hour ago, fired an arrow at us, threatened us, said he was going to take all of our goods, said that if we didn't do exactly that, he said he would kill us all. And uh, we tried to comply, but he had at us anyway. And then his friend, some other ruffian, came along and, the, to, to, and combined the two of them, slaughtered my friend over there, knocked us unconscious. You see, I'm bleeding from my tooth. My friend over there could barely stand. It was horrible, he says. This is where you want to do an insight check to see if you think he's telling the truth. All right. Uh, so for the insight checks, I wasn't really... Uh, you go to your... How my, my dad was doing it, but like... Um, yeah, go, yeah, bring up your character sheet and click on, uh, click on insight, yeah. Uh, insight. Um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of skills. skills? skills yeah, like athletics, acrobatics, intimidation, somewhere, somewhere there. Yeah, to show the more, uh, inside. So, yeah, somewhere to the right of like your strength oh, yeah, and intelligence. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, okay. You yeah, get yeah, the yeah. feeling. You get the feeling that this guy is really spooked. That he's really frightened. That he's traumatized. But you don't really know if he's being 100% on the up and up with you. Okay. Um, it seems, seems like it's probably more of the story. 
Um, I ask him in which direction did the two men go? No, you mean those murderers? They headed off to Silver Run. Yeah. As a matter of fact, why don't you do us a favor? Go in there and get the sheriff and the authorities, and they can arrest those fools, he says. Okay. Um, could you be sure? Uh, I ask him if there's any other information I should know. Anything else I should know? Uh, he says, uh, don't you know enough? You see my friend's body over there? As a matter of fact, maybe we should maybe we should carry him into town together, so we have proof of what these villains did. He says. All right. Um, do you know what these men look like? Can you describe them? Uh, he says yes, and he gives you a description of the two of them, which I don't remember what they look like right now. So he gives you a description. He gives you a description of the two of them. So now you know what they look like, brother okay. and pro yeah. Uh, Brother Cahill has the same sense that you have that this guy's not quite on the up and up, but he's not totally lying either. And he kind of looks at you and like, boy, what's going on here? You know what I'm saying? Kind of, he kind of says without saying anything. Um, for now, I'm going to trust these men's insight. I mean, oh, well, their judgment or what that happened. And I'm going to help them carry their friend's body to Silver Run. And we're going to contact the sheriff to see. Okay, the the the, the Marty Torres said, by the way, my name is Raleigh. He said, Thank you so much. But perhaps you could do us a favor. If you and your strong friend here could carry the body yourselves, uh, my friend and I have some packing up to do. Obviously you can understand we're extremely traumatized. Okay. I, I agree to this arrangement. He says, Thank you very much. Okay, so with that you guys want to head up towards Silver Run? Yep. All right, bring your character up in that direction. Right. Oops, I clicked the wrong thing again. Well, that's right. I'm going to move it to the other map anyway, so yeah, don't worry about it. Okay. I'm about oh, to move I'm you again. Right that's right. I'm moving you again, so just don't worry about it. All righty. Oh, hold on. You're back over there now. So glad that I figured out how to move people around this uh, stupid thing. Okay, so uh, the two guys with the body count, Kildor and... Uh, okay, so... Kildor and um, Alton, can you put your, can you can you put your token somewhere near the end? It doesn't have to be perfect. It was just kind of general idea of the location there. And um, Cadgar, you are seeing the Silver Run map now. Yes, I am. Uh, put put yourself kind of somewhere in the south there, kind of by the central road. It doesn't have to be exact. Now this is not going to be a combat situation right now, but just so I, I just so I can visualize where you guys are, kind of, and so you guys can as well. So. As the stronger of the two, between you and Brother Cahill, Cadgar, you are carrying the lifeless body of Vigo the Miner, as his friends told you, uh, across Silver Run, uh, into Silver Run. And as you come into town, you see the same thing. I think you heard the description I gave to uh, to your to your brother and father earlier. You heard the description I gave of, of the outskirts of Silver Run? Or no? Um, it's okay if you didn't. I can repeat it, sure. Sure, okay. Yeah, yeah. So as you enter Silver Run, you see a few tents ringing the exterior of what looks like it is a more settled community if you were to follow any of the dirt roads further into town. Uh, a couple of storefronts or tents into town, uh, in, in, up this road, but still on the outskirts. Uh, you see a street food vendor and his assistant. Uh, you smell uh, meat being grilled. Uh, the vendor sees you, and right away he looks terrified and he goes he goes my word what happened he says to you but you're carrying um, keep in mind you know you're carrying a a dead body down the street into, into the town here early in the afternoon and he okay so i'm going to ask the vendor um if he saw two men and i tell the description <laughs> of what the two men look like <laughs> hey that's a little too much coach it's too self-aware you're in a character he said he said, he, he says, uh, he said, yes, yes. I saw two men. They came through. One of them had blood on his blade. I sent them to the Stone Inn, straight down the middle of town. But please, do, do, me, do me a favor first. Uh, when you go there, just wait in front. Uh, I'm going to get the sheriff, he says. Okay. All right. Uh, and what do you do? Do you continue down to the, the inn? All right. Um, is there a place where, like, the two men who are 
injured can go like uh, get healed or whatever. They're not even. Oh, you they went their own way. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, they're, yeah. Not, they're following me. No, they are. Because I'm I'm carrying the their dead friend's body. Or yeah. Well, yeah. They, yeah. They told you that, and they said that they said they had they had to packing up to do, uh, but you know, uh, but they gave the impression that they would come back in, but you haven't seen them behind you yet. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. So yeah. So, yeah. So, so so yeah. So if, if they come, it might be later. They seem to be like, packing up all their belongings, which takes a little bit of time. I mean, so. um, is there a place where I can dispose of this body? Because I don't want to walk into the inn with the body on my shoulder. Uh, he says, "Well." Um, if you don't mind, you two look like holy men. You're bearing the emblem of the uh, Lords of Destiny. If you just carry that body into town, uh, no one's going to give you a hard time. I think we trust uh, the Lords of Destiny. And uh, I'm sure the sheriff, you know, you're carrying the body. I'm just running. The, the sheriff will be there to meet you in front of the inn, and I'll tell him what happened. He says. All right. I, I Sounds good? Okay. Yeah. Put, yourself, put yourself over there by the inn. Okay. All right. Uh, when you um, you get to the front of the inn, and you see coming up, you see coming up this road here. Okay, uh, from the west, uh, you see uh, a guy uh, with uh, wearing some chainmail armor, and he's got a, a, a sword and some other weapons on him, and he's got a, an armored guy next to him, and you see about uh, five or six guys kind of coming behind him. Uh, a couple of them have got uh, swords, and uh, and and uh, others have got. Uh, like a couple of clubs and weapons like that. Maybe there's about eight of them total. And uh, he comes up to you and he uh, he says, oh, he, was, he says, uh, he says, uh, hi, stranger. He says to you and uh, Brother Cahill. He says, thank you for your kindness in escorting that uh, that uh, slain miner here into town. Uh, one of my men here will take him from you. And this big guy comes over to take the body from you and he carries him back down this that road that the sheriff came up. He says, I'm the sheriff. Uh, what, what can you tell me? Uh, uh, the vendor over here told me that there's two guys in the inn right now and that they killed this guy that you carried into town. Um, yes, that is apparent. Well, I'm going to assist you with the, um, the arresting of these two men. <laughs> the, the, these two um, criminals. Vagabonds. Vagabonds. <laughs> he says, all right. He says, well, I see you've got that sword and shield. And even your friend here looks a little more brotherly. He's got his mace. And as you can see, we've got plenty of guys behind us. If push comes to shove, you ready to take down these villains? He says. Yes, I am ready to take down these villains. All right. Well, let me talk first and see what happens. You know, I'm not the type to shoot first and ask questions later. Uh, we didn't know these three men. They'd only been around a couple of weeks. And uh, who knows what really happened, he says. Uh, uh, with that. You see the sheriff and the deputy next to him uh, walk into the 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 the, right of the court, the Great Rock Inn. Uh, you guys follow him behind him. Yes. He walks in. You two guys behind him. There's a few more guys behind you guys. So there's about eight of you guys now, at least. And uh, who am I talking to now? I gotta get your character names. Kildor and Alton. You're at the the bar, having a nice beer, reminiscing about how good that beef kebab tasted, freshly grilled. Better than hard tack on the road, and you see uh, when you hear the the door swing open and uh, a whole host of armed men come in, uh, walking kind of normally, and uh, you notice the meat vendor right next to a guy in the front who looks like the the man with authority. Indeed, he's wearing a sheriff's badge, and you see this sheriff say to the meat vendor, "Are those the two? And the meat vendor looks really scared. He's pointing at you guys. That's them. That's them. He says. And uh, the sheriff, the sheriff does not take a step closer. All right, he's about twenty feet away from you guys, and he says, uh, "Gentlemen, uh, I think we have some business we need to discuss." All right, I say, sure. Well, where would you like to discuss it? Here or back in your area? Back at your uh, area? well, if I could get your names first, your I don't office. think we've been properly introduced. Sure, I would say I'm Kildor Rayson. Um, racing of house racing he says right. yes absolutely i'm uh, really more of a lone traveler yeah well okay my noble my noble my noble voice why would you question that i i can't, I, can't you tell from my countenance that i'm part of house racing 
I uh, meant no disrespect, uh, my lord. I just uh, I'm not accustomed to seeing a member of House Racing out in these parts. That's for sure. And everyone, everyone seemed to kind of stiffen up and get a little tight with surprise when you mentioned that you that you that you were racing. And uh, and your friend over there, he says, he uh, is he a racing too? He asked kind of questioningly because he looks kind of rough and tumble. I'll let him. I'll let him speak for himself. Uh, no, I'm not a racing. My name is Elton Pony Rose. I see. And you two are traveling companions or something like that? Well, I just came upon uh, three men charging this man. I went in and I said, yeah, we're traveling companions. <laughs> I said, yeah, but I'll tell you okay. what happened. I said, I said, I came upon three men charging this guy. And, uh, and I went to uh, defuse the situation. You know, to defuse the situation. But well, why don't we take this conversation someplace a little more private? Um, if uh, if you, uh, Mr. Kildor, and uh, you, Alton, wouldn't mind, um, just follow me. He says, "Okay." And he and he and he mean, he means for you, uh, Cadgar, Cadgar, and Brother Cahill to follow as well. Uh, he he heads out the uh, end. You guys follow him. Yep. Yes. Yeah, but I make sure to keep a little bit of distance. So if I run away, <laughs> okay, they're not too close to me. We did nothing oh. wrong. So we have nothing to worry about. All right, you step out into the street, and the sheriff looks kind of confused, and he's trying to think of what to do. And he says, uh, "You know, uh, let's head this way." He says, and he starts walking up uh, this sort of north northeast road here. I can barely ping, but. That road going up, up, up that way, okay? Yeah. And uh, you hear like the, the some of the people are milling about in the, in the town, including four of the armed guys who are with them. Like, oh, what's going on? You know, and the four guys who are with them are kind of like looking surprised and kind of disturbed that that at the direction he's going with, uh, with you guys, not probably what they were expecting or maybe even hoping. Okay. Um, and then you hear one of the guys yell out, uh, Sheriff, uh, the jail's that way, he says. And he points in the other direction. And the sheriff turns and says, don't tell me how to do my job, he says to the guy, okay? Uh, and you guys head up uh, this way, okay? And it says temple, but there are no temples here, okay? Uh, but you, you you pass by this area. You go to the building that's labeled temple, okay? And uh, you walk in, and, and the sheriff goes in there. And now it's just... The sheriff, the deputy, uh, the uh, Cadgar, Brother Cahill, and you two guys, uh, a couple of people like milling behind, but realizing they're kind of not really wanted. And uh, you go, and the sheriff opens the door in this building, holds the door open for you guys. It's just a normal looking kind of tavern, taverny type place. Do you follow him in there? Yeah, let's go in and see what's going on. All right, you go into the building. Okay, you go into the building, and uh, and it's kind of like a kind of nice, uh, kind of upscale looking kind of a tavern place, but with no customers. There's a billiards table in the middle. There's a, a bar that can maybe seat about eight to ten people, you know, with some uh, nice glasses hanging on, much nicer than you'd expect here. And uh, the sheriff says, uh, you know what, guys? Uh, you know, I'm not sure what to make of all this. Uh, he says, you know what, guys? I'm not sure what to make of all this. Uh, I've got to go uh, fetch the director. Uh, and uh, get his input on this. Uh, so why don't you guys just uh, take a seat, uh, including you guys, he says to Brother Cahill and uh, and Cadgar, if you don't mind, he says to Cahill and Cadgar, they didn't kill anybody, so if you don't mind, um, you know, uh, and I'll be back in a moment with the director. He's, he, I think he's going to want to talk to you guys, particularly you, uh, Mr. Rayson, he says to uh, Kildor. That sounds good. We'll just relax here. All right, so you guys relax. You take it easy. There's a comfortable sofa with some fluffy pillows. Uh, there's so some I, nuts. I, I engage um, these other two men, and I'm like, "Well, what are you? What's your uh, stories, you, you uh, knights of the knights of the temple of the whatever? <laughs> what is it again? Well, Lord of Destiny. Lords of Destiny. No, Lord. so tell, so tell me about you two lords. What what, what brings you here? Now, 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 Cadgar, you should have Brother Cahill 
doesn't mind talking, but he's also happy to defer to you in some of these situations. He's a, a very pious man, and he maybe not maybe not always that comfortable with a situation like this, dealing with real world people and a, and a murder or death, I should say, and things like that. So he's happy to let you uh, take the lead and answer any questions. Um, my name is uh, Kagar Bodman, and I would like to lo you know, learn your name before we well, continue. As, as you heard the share, I oh, you tell the sheriff I'm Kildor, and this is Alton. So now that we are on yeah, first name I... basis, uh, how did they rope you into this? How long have you been in town? Oh, I just arrived. Up. Okay, and so I asked um, uh, Kildor um, his side of the story. Like, what did he see when they interact with those three miners? Oh, three miners? Where, where, where did you come across three miners? When you murdered one. And the, the <laughs> I didn't know such a thing. I haven't murdered anyone. Uh, then how could we have a, a dead body that um, your friend over there said you have murdered him? Uh, well, what gives you that idea? What exactly did these miners tell you? Brother uh, Cahill, br 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 Brother Kayla actually says, we, we, we carried a dead body into town. And two men fitting your description were said to have gone that way just an hour beforehand. Are you saying you had nothing to do with the, the killing of this man? Well, it's it was true. I'm I'm telling you it was not a murder. I heard you say the word murder. He was, uh, you know, he was, def Alton was defending himself when he stuck his knife in his neck. Just, uh, <laughs> there was nothing untoward in that attack. There was, they, the three of them were attacking Alton, and he was just defending himself, and I was there to keep the peace. Okay, so I, I, okay, so I, so so as you guys are talking, all of a sudden the uh, the conversation is interrupted as the sheriff comes back in, uh, comes back in into the building. The deputy's been standing outside the whole time, kind of, kind of keeping, kind of keeping watch, and uh, the sheriff is followed by. A tall, middle-aged man, maybe his late forties, uh, a little kind of like a little pudgy, balding. Uh, okay, and uh, he comes in and, and and he sees you guys, and he says, "Gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen, what are you doing to my mining town?" And you rec recognize that this must be Director Sorensen, who is known as being the uh, the leader of this mining community, which only has about two hundred and fifty residents or so. And he kind of asked the question openly. Well, I will roll a persuasion roll because I'm just going to explain the whole situation exactly as it happened um, and just tell him that, you know, we're absolutely we're not looking to cause any trouble. But I came across three men, three men charging a lone traveler and I stepped in to uh, keep the peace. Unfortunately, one of them died by the by the knife of this young man trying to protect himself uh, these and three vagabonds charged us <laughs> so we're, we're, I, I'm I have been nothing but a, a man of peace my entire life and I just came to uh, town to see what adventures I could find in the in Silver Run uh, he says uh, I said I see three men charging this uh, this friend of yours is that correct absolutely well, a new friend. I didn't know him before, prior to this. I see. So, so you thought it would be uh, doing some sort of a service to help this man who was suddenly outnumbered by these three people. Yes, I, I tried to get them to stop and talk it out like civilized men, but unfortunately, the battle had or the uh, they had uh, gotten too far into it before I could before I could get things under control. And if I understand correctly, you are Kildor Racin of House Racin? I am. And you should know by the fact that where are these two ne'er-do-wells uh, to explain their side of the story? I'm sure they've run off to the hills by now because you they know, were lying it, to you. You know, he says that's an excellent segment, uh to uh, question those those miners and see what happens. And uh, he, he, he nods to the sheriff, opens the door, and you hear the sheriff give some instructions to the deputy who goes running off. Uh, uh, in a certain direction, so you assume that he's going to go try to retrieve those guys and see what's going on. Now, I'd like to remind Kagdor, are you there, Kagdor? Kag Kadgar? Yes, yes. I'm I, I, I don't remember if I made this clear earlier, but you and Brother Cahill, your mission in coming to Silver Run was to try to talk to Director Sorensen 
and to get his blessing uh, or his allowance, really, uh, so that you could be allowed to open up a, an outdoor tent and and uh, to hold services for your religion and try to spread your religion uh, into Silver Run. And uh, and that, that, that was your mission and why you came to Silver Run. So just keep that in mind, maybe when the opportunity is correct, okay? Uh, uh, yeah, yes, he says, uh, interesting. He said, and, and these two men... Uh, it's uh, from the Lords of Destiny. It's Cadgar and Brother Cahill. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. And uh, what may ask brings you to our fine mining community? We haven't had uh, any visitors from the Lords of Destiny, really. Uh, we are here to ask you for your blessing to to um, spread the goodwill of the Lords of Destiny to uh, Silver One. And how do you intend to do that, uh, my good man? Uh, we would ask that you uh, kindly donate some um, of your wealth to assist us in building a temple of worship or some, something like that. I see, he says. So uh, an entire temple to be built, that might be putting the cart before the horse, but perhaps uh, a valuable parcel of land where you could have some temporary services uh and then we see how things go from there. That might be something that you gentlemen might be interested in. Yes, that would be uh, very nice. Brother, brother, brother Cahill seems very intrigued and interested by this. And he's he's getting very excited at the idea that uh, that, that 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 Director Sorensen seems so amenable to uh, to uh, to what you said. Then. And Director Sorensen uh, suddenly looks very serious and kind of puts his head down and kind of uh, looks very concerned and worried. He says, "Well." I have to say, gentlemen, all, all, all four of you, including you, uh, Lord Rayson. Well, you're not the Lord Rayson, but I'm not sure how to address you. We've had some very rough business here this afternoon. There's, you know, strangers in the camp, bloodshed, a dead miner. We've got conflicting stories that what started this violence. Was it murder? Uh, I don't know. You know, a lot of people around here, they, they hear a dead miner, they hear strangers in town, they, they're going to want a trial. They're going to want justice. You know, and uh, there's only one kind of justice we give out in these parts, and it's not a, a lot of lenient one. I'll tell you that much. But on the other hand, I, but the other hand, well, let me finish my let me finish my piece, son. On the other hand, uh, I know how these things are. Men will fight. You've got miners. You've got drinking. You've got travelers on the road. Sometimes things happen. But I, I need some kind of a way out of this. I need to be able to talk to the people in town and say. Look, there's more to the story than meets the eye. We don't know exactly what happened. Uh, but, you know, I need some way to kind of make things peaceful with the people of the community. I've got, I've got a community to run here. I'm running a business. I can't have these kind of disturbances. And we had a dead body carried through the middle of this town this afternoon for crying, for crying out loud, he says. So I'm thinking of something, you know, maybe there's a way to do something and find a solution here that's, that's equitable for everyone involved. Uh, you two, uh, let's face it, he says to you, uh, Kildor, Kildor, and to um, Alton, he says, you two, a lot of people are going to accuse you of murder, of having killed these guys, uh, killed this guy. He says, and the other two here, you know, maybe you have a part to play. Maybe you can soften the atmosphere with uh, your religious play towards towards forgiveness and penitence, that sort of thing. That's kind of what you're interested in, isn't it, uh, isn't it, Cadgar, if I may say so? Yes, that is um, a good thing. All right. He says, well, what, well what, do you, what do you guys think of this? What about, and now he's talking to you, Cadigar, and to Brother Cahill. He says, what do you think if we give these other two men, Mr. Raysonier and Alton, we give them a chance to, uh, to absolve themselves, to do some good for the camp after all this disharmony they brought about? What, what do you two religious really men think of that? Um, perhaps they should assist us in... Um Oh, no, I'm helping us. Oh, no, 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 it finally, um, my headphones died. Oh, hold on, I'm going to go out of now. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, it's a sign from What's the gods happened? that oh. these people are. <laughs> Can you hear us still? No, uh, now I do. Uh, 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 re re repeat, 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 repeat that. So, Say what, Dennis? Um, okay, so. Well, we have nothing to absolve us for, but we're happy to listen to any proposals you have. Yeah, just, just, I'm, not yeah. much of, I'm not much of a religious man myself. So, well, uh, may perhaps you're a little more comfortable with, with the blade. Would that be fair to say, Mr. Rayson? Yeah, I'm not interested in spreading the word of any one religion. Uh, 
I'm sorry, I missed that. Were, were, were you talking in character there, Kangar, to uh, to uh, Kildor? No, it's just I can't. You can speak up. Doesn't matter if you you, you can't hear. You can't hear no, I can't. No, because my oh. headphones died. Oh, so hold on, hold on one second. You. No, I, 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 I hear him now. Can you can you can you hear me or no? Which one were you using? Maybe one, maybe the other one. Was no, Dad. Like you cannot charge it one individually. That's not how it works. Okay, hold on one second. We have a technical issue. Well, I'll just turn mine up. Okay. Or I can just turn mine on speakers. That's, never mind. I'll do that. Hold on. Let's do. Okay, Tom, can you speak and see if we can hear you? Yep, I'm here. Can you hear yep, me? Yep, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes, I can hear you. That, that'll work. All right. I do have some right. feedback. I do have some feedback. So, a lot of echo. Are you hear feedback now? Echo. Make sure you're. Well, not, uh, not feedback. Uh, I should uh, say uh, echo. A really bad echo. Okay, hold on. I think we have some mics on. Turn your microphone on. Uh, where's your. Where's your stream yard? I'm going to mute. Don't you mute my computer? So that's on the stream yard. Yeah, but that's all that matters. Oh, I see. Yeah, it might be on the other one too. So we'll go here. Sounds. Somebody say something. All right, that's not bad. There's no more echo, Dennis. Okay, good. It's okay. I just turned off Koji's um, uh, microphone on on Never Shore. So, okay. Okay. So now we can talk and not have to worry about echo on either side. Okay. All right. Okay. So, all right. So, Director Torrance has said uh, he had said to um, to Cadgar and Brother Cahill, he said, "You guys are all about you know penitence and and forgiveness and absolution." He said, "Why don't he said, don't you think we should give these two men, meaning uh." Kildor and Alton, a chance to absolve themselves to do some good for the camp. And if I heard you right, Cadgar, you were saying, yes, perhaps they could help us to spread the word. And then Kildor interrupted and said, I'm not interested in spreading the word of any one religion. Is that correct? Yeah, that is true. Okay. And uh, Director Sorensen says, well, you know, you know, I understand, Cadgar, that you and Brother Kale want to spread the religion, but we certainly can't force it on someone like Mr. Racing here, but amends need to be made. The camp will not be satisfied if there is not either a form of justice or perhaps recompense. Uh, but you two men, um, Cadgar and Brother Cahill, you want to make a good first impression in the camp, right? Yes, that is true. You want, to, you want to show us that, you know, if we're willing to open our lives to you and give you a chance to, to convert some of these fine workers that you might also be willing to sacrifice on our behalf. Is that right? Yes, that is right. That is correct. And I see, Cadgar, that you carry a sword and a shield. I know you're a holy man, but you have something of the look of a fighter. You're willing to put those weapons to good use, aren't you? Oh yes, of course. Okay, so he so so he says, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to hear it. He says, well, he says, listen, Mr. Race and Alton, you know this is a horrible business. Uh, the people are up in arms. I'm sure you saw only only five minutes after word was spread, uh, there was a good group of what was it, ten or fifteen men. Uh, hanging out in front of the uh, in front of the inn with, with clubs and who knows what else, you know these uh, mine have got a lot of weapons on them. I, I just don't know if we don't do something about this situation. Uh, you know, if, if some form of recompense isn't made, uh, how we can get out of this? You know, strangers coming in and killing local workers, justified or not, it just doesn't sit well. Um, so even though you may feel that you did nothing wrong, Mr. Rayson and uh, Young Alton here. I think it's only fair from the uh, community standpoint to feel like you may owe us something of a debt uh, and have some obligation to uh, to calm down this unrest. Don't you? Don't you agree? Well, I'm happy to. Ha I came here looking for adventure. So if you need something done, uh, let me know. But um, I I am I'm taking umbrage at the number one, the fact that you think that we did something wrong. Nothing wrong was done. And number two. Uh, these so-called longtime residents, these miners, have only been here for a few weeks. And you probably already got a bad feeling about the type of character they were. Well, I understand, Mr. I certainly mean the personal effect. I'm only speaking, looking out for the uh, betterment of the entire community. I can't control all of these men. 
They are workers also. Um, so I certainly meant no personal offense. I hope you don't take it that way. But I think there's a way out of this uh, that everyone can be satisfied. Uh, I'm glad to hear you have a, a thirst for adventure uh, because we are in need of, uh, of some assistance. Um, let me click on the right file here. That's why I'm pausing. He says, you know, uh, here's the deal, really. I mean, we're, we're a small community, but we're burgeoning, and this town needs growth. You know, uh, we've been mining in this mountain for quite some time. We need a new source of ore. And my surveyors believe that there's a cave complex not far from here that might just do the trick. Now, listen, Mr. Rayson, I'm sure for your family, you understand this sort of thing. Ore means mines. Mines mean jobs, and jobs keep everyone happy. Uh, so what we want is, you know, here's the, here's the problem. Some of those caves up there, they just might not be... Might not be the safest. We're not sure. And uh, these folks, you know, they're just simple miners. They're angry about what happened. They're not skilled fighters like you like you guys are. You saw a quick work you two made of those poor gentlemen out by their tents. You know, so what do you say? What I propose is uh, you guys head up there to the caverns. You scout them out. You make sure they're safe for the rest of us. And then you guys can leave here with a clean slate, you know. Uh, no, no blemish on, on, your, on your good name. You know, restoration made to the good people of Silver Run. And after, then we don't have to worry about any... Uh, any reaction by the angry mobs in the street or anything like that, I'll, I'll make sure to take care of that uh, when they understand that everything's to their benefit and that you're doing this out of the goodness of their heart. Of course, you believe, you say you're innocent, and I'll make sure that they know that as well. And uh, I can even say in my own opinion of that, and the sheriff can say his own opinion of that too, if you're willing to give us out a hand. Uh, so what do you say? Uh, you want to uh, scout out those cabins for us, take care of any trouble that might be up there, and, uh, and we'll call it even? Well, I'm willing to go take a look as long as I get to um, uh, keep what I find, and I'll let you guys know what the condition of the cave is. Well, sure. I mean, these are uh, supposedly uninhabited uh, uninhabited caverns. You know, maybe there's some creatures in there. I'm not sure what you're hoping to find. <laughs> he he laughs and says uh, says that. Uh, but how about you, young Alton? You uh, you willing to make restitution this way? Uh, and we've got a whole town of angry people. I know you look like a, a restless young man, but uh, maybe you should listen to Mr. Racing here and, and help make restitution. What do you say? Absolutely. That's a good lad. That's the way you want to do it. Uh, he says, now, now, Cadgar, my good man, Brother Cahill, I, by all means, would be more than happy to open up the town to you guys, give you some land, you know, set aside, you know, uh, to set up your temple. Uh, to get things going for the Lords of Destiny. But, you know, I don't know what kind of business these guys are going to run into up in the caverns. They could use a hand. Uh, the strength in numbers, four is better than two. And uh, as religious men, you could observe these two and make sure that, you know, if there's any repentance that needs to be done, that they that they, that they they do it and you can record their, their deeds and, and perhaps speak to their character, not only to us, but to the town's folk as well. And let's face it, you two as uh, members of the Lords of Destiny accompany them, would only enhance their reputations. So what do you say? Make it a party of four, head to the caverns, and uh, take care of business on behalf of the townsfolk? I agree. This would make a lasting impression on the townsfolk. Brother Cahill says, uh, well, I'd like to get started on the temple, but uh, okay, I'll, 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 I'll go along. And uh, Director Sorrent says, outstanding. And it's all taken care of. Uh, we'll make sure you guys are outfitted. Uh, we'll probably set up a base camp by the cavern. It's not that far from me over to the northwest, not far from where, where you met those those gentlemen, actually. And uh, we'll spread the word through town of uh, the agreement we've come to. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put you guys up at the inn tonight, you know, give you a nice private room, nice steak dinner, you know, no exploring on an empty stomach in the morning, eh, he says. And he's in a very good mood and good humor right now. That sounds good. What kind of equipment do you think we'll need that we may not have? Well, uh, let's. Uh, I'll, I'll make sure you're you're uh, well uh, well taken care of. I'll have the quartermaster outfit everything for this type of uh, excursion in the morning. And uh, trust me, you can go through all the equipment if you like before you leave. But uh, he knows well. He knows to make sure you have what you need. Sounds well. All right. He says all right, gentlemen. How about if I, you know what? Hey. Walk uh, down the town, down the town's main street together. I'll escort you to the inn, and uh, I'll make sure that the word is spread. He says. Very well. All right. So he walks out uh, of the of the that little tavern place you're in. He meaning for you guys to follow him. You follow him, I assume. Yes. Yes. 
All right, you walk down the, the town center. He's talking loudly with you guys as though everything is fine. Kind of make sure everyone hears him. Uh, he's got a little, own little entourage of some armed guards who kind of follow him at a bit of a distance. You know, maybe uh, four to six guys. Uh, there's some townsfolk kind of looking a little confused, a little, a little suspicious, not really sure what the heck is going on. You know, but uh, so be it. He brings you to the end. He comes in. He makes a big demonstrative show about that as well. He goes to the desk. He says, uh, then he gets a little quiet. The desk says, give these men a good room for the night, and uh, let's make sure they're not disturbed. Uh, the uh, the uh, a man comes to take you to, to, to show you to your rooms, leads you upstairs. You know, uh, two of uh, Director Sorensen's guards follow you. Director Sorensen is going to have these guys, you know, make sure you get you get a restful night's sleep, you know, just... Uh, you know, they'll just be, uh, you know, uh, on the same floor just to make sure that, you know, in case there's any any, any business from the, the, the local community that, uh, you know, you guys aren't disturbed, he says, okay? Okay. All right. He says, uh, he says in a couple hours, you know, why don't you guys go get comfortable? A couple hours, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll bring, up, uh, bring up food for you guys, and, and, and that's that, okay? All right. So as you guys go into your rooms, you get a really good feeling that Director Sorensen – He's a totally he's a total politician. You know that he's full of BS on the one hand, but on the other hand, that he's going to do everything that he's just said because there, there seems to be something in it for him. He wants that he wants that uh, that cavern open for that, that cave complex open for uh, mining ex exploration and, and excavation. So he feels good about the, the way things have gone. He's pretty excited about it. Um, about an hour later or so, or an hour before dinner. Uh, Alton, you get a knock on your door. Um, I wake up and is there like a peephole or something to look through before opening it? Uh, there's no peephole, but you can ask who it is. All right, I ask who it is and uh, grab one of my weapons. He says, uh, "It's me, Director Sorensen," and it is Director Sorensen. You can tell by his voice. All right, I open the door. This is how you doing, man? I say, "May I come in for a minute?" He says, and he's he's really not. Like he's, physically, he's not threatening at all. You know that if push came to shove, you'd have no problem taking care of Director Sorensen's weapon or not. All right. So yeah, I'll let him in. All right. He comes in. He, he, ta he takes a seat and he says, "Listen, uh, I'm really sorry about that business today. You know, I, from what I understand, those three guys did did rush you. You know, uh, it seemed like you were in the you were in the clear, and uh, you know." Uh, I just feel really badly about what happened. I don't know if they felt like you were carrying something, uh, perhaps of value. He says, uh, "You know, I'm always looking. I'm always looking for for nice things to buy." He says. Oh, okay. Um, well, I tell him I'm I'm I am carrying something, something pretty valuable. Oh, oh well, you know, my good man. You know, uh, I'm a businessman, and I'm all about business. What What do you have for me? Um. I tell him a jewel of sorts, and I uh, reach into my bag, pull it out. All right, you got this. All right, you got this nice, like little blue jewel, and he looks very impressed. Oh, that he says that is nice. He says, uh, "Now let's not worry about where you got it." He says, um, "But I'm going to pay a reasonable price." Uh, what do you say to about uh, 210 gold pieces? He says to you. Say, now you uh, were now, now you were expecting. 200 to 240 is what you're hoping for. So it'll be on uh, 230, and I'll, I'll let you have it. 230, he says, you know. He says, you know, I take a jewel like that. All I'm going to do is keep it in my drawer. I don't know if I can show it around. Uh, you know, people might start asking questions. What, what do you say 220, he says? I say it's pretty good. And I take huh? so. All right. Outstanding young man, he says. And he takes out. Uh, a little pouch of gold pieces. He tosses it to you. He says, "You can count it all. Make sure it's there. And uh, when you when you're satisfied, just pass me the jewel. You count it. It's all there. You hand him the jewel." Yes, I do. All right. He says, and by the way, he says, "Let's just keep this between us two, He says to you. Thanks, sir. All right. So you can add when you're ready. Uh, if you know it, you can go to your character sheet. And you can add 220 gold pieces onto your <laughs> onto your character sheet. Um, uh, you should see it down by your inventory. It should be the uh, the coins. Okay, so an hour later, go. All right, so the rest of the evening passes uneventfully. You guys have your your steak dinners separately, sent to your rooms. 
You get a really good night's sleep. It's nice to be in some comfortable quarters. Uh, you wake up the next morning. You come out of your room. You see the guards there who, you know, just kind of standing there kind of for your own protection just in case. Um, but you don't feel too concerned about it. You can tell the director Sorensen is kind of the big shot around here. And it's unlikely that anyone's going to try anything on you guys who are all armed and want to use a racing. And you apparently already killed the guy. And now you're traveling with, accompanied by two members of the Lords of Destiny. So it seems like uh, any discontent in the community is going to die down. And as, as Kildor alluded to earlier, these guys weren't really well-established members of the community. They weren't too well-known and stuff like that. Uh, so you head downstairs, you go up front, and uh, you see there's a, a wagon loaded with uh, provisions. There's a group of about seven men. And uh, one of them uh, was an older chap, maybe in his... Uh, Early 50s, older for this era, Dennis. Uh, <laughs> says, ah, gentlemen, he says, uh, you ready for ready for our excursion, he says. There is one thing. Now, I'm not interested necessarily in gold myself, but, you know, we need some kind of agreement for my young friend Alton here and, uh, and, the, wow. and, and the Lords of, uh, of Destiny. Uh, if we do successfully accomplish this task, what, what, um, what is in it for them? What is in it for them? What what is in it for who? For, what is in it for who? The man asks. Well, we're going to. Oh, this is not the director. Who is who's talking to us? No, it, it, it's not the director. It, it, it's it's an older guy, like in his early fifties, who seems to be in charge of the expedition. Oh, okay. Uh, he, he's he, he's you know the, he's in charge of the wagon. He's got he's got to take an inventory when you guys come out. Yeah, I think we so I think we reward. messed up guys by not asking for some kind of reward for this, but no, what's no, done no, is done. No, no, the reward is amnesty for you two. But we don't and need amnesty. Exactly. There was nothing we did. You guys are gonna get get, get murdered by the town people. Maybe we should. Yeah, maybe we should just right. leave. Uh, no, we're good. We're good. No, 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 no. We still have the one horse. That that, that that was that that was what he offered. He offered you amnesty. He offered you amnesty and goodwill and a clean conscience in yeah, exchange for doing, uh, uh, for doing this task. Clean conscience. Uh, do I still have that horse that we uh, I rode into town with? Uh, yeah, you yes, you guys checked your horse. Could we all? Uh, I, for, horse? I forgot <laughs> about the horse. We no, we the horse stable. No, you, you, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they, they've got they've got a wagon. That's good. They've got a they've got a couple of wagons, one full of supplies, or the other that people can sit on it. And that'll take you guys to the uh, to the to the site. All right, I'm gonna ride my horse. Instead of getting into the wagon. All right, well, with, with my friend. No, gonna your go horse, your horse? The horse is going to stay there because how are they going to get the horse back? You, you want to leave the horse there being stable. All right, just, um, all right I'm going to stable my horse. Then we're going to go. Yeah, the horse, is, right, the horse is stable. No problem. Okay. Uh, and so, And you can tell that the, the, this guy, you just get a good feeling about him, this older guy, in terms of that he knows what he's doing. You know, and uh, one of the wagons looks pretty pretty well loaded with anything that you, that you might need. Um, sorry, sorry, guys. You, you, you ready to head out? And he's, there's a group of about six other guys with him. Yep. He says, uh, he says, I don't know if director what director Sorensen told you, but you know, we're gonna we're gonna set a base camp at the uh at the base of this this uh cave complex. He said, uh, you know, we'll talk more when we get there, he says. So he, he directs you guys to load up into the wagons and you head off. Okay? okay. All right, so you go. All right, so you go. Let's see, hold on a second. Do 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 I got files here, I gotta That, that's already dug. Established. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know. So, so we should go to the... He's going to give us a new map. Okay. Yeah. Because they, yeah, it's not here. It's okay. It's... Um... Let's see if I do this right. This will be interesting if I, if I can actually do this right. Mm hmm A minute, guys. And this next map, if it works, is really uh, kind of like um, zoomed out, like really, it's a larger map, and your icons are going to be really tiny on it. And you're going to have to like zoom in like 200%, okay? Okay. And I'm trying something with it that, that I've been working, that I worked on. It took a long time to. Try to figure out and roll 20. I'll see if it works or not. Okay. 
I, I just tried did I, I just tried to put you all on this map. Are you there or no? Um, yeah, the, I'm. The black. Yeah, we have the black map. I don't see okay. any. Mm -hmm. Scroll down. Scroll down. Wow. Okay. It's mostly a black screen. Is. Zoom in, zoom, zoom in to like two hundred and fifty percent, almost the maximum, and then scroll down towards the bottom. Yep, I see it. All right, and hold on one second. This map is large. This is like a. Oh, you was doing too much. No, I'm, I'm at like 250% right now. So. All right. Now, yeah, now, now, like I said, I'm new to roll 20. And so I wasn't quite sure how to get a proper, the cave complex. I wanted it to do everything exactly right. Okay. So this is what I ended up with. Okay. Now, every, everything that's in black means that you can't see it. Okay, it's in the caves. It's underground. Blah 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 blah. Okay, you will be able to light a torch. Anyone can light a torch, and then you're going to get visibility as you move. Okay, um, you do need to be zoomed in to like all the way, like like 250 percent. I think is the most you can do, something like that. Okay, and it's very awkward on a map this size that this is zoomed in so far. To kind of do everything, and you see how tiny your icons are, okay? But that's about the that was the best I could do on my first effort of this. And I, in the future, I don't think it's gonna be like this. What I would do in the future is this might be the the entrance, and I would set up separate maps inside so you wouldn't have to have it so far zoomed out. I've got a pretty big, big screen. I don't know about you guys. Is is it so small that it's really like oh my god, Tom? I can't even really deal with this. I mean, no, I could probably no, do something. Uh, uh, Boji and Ryder, are you okay or no? Yep. Yeah. All right, so you should be able to see here, okay? Um, now, most of the, now, the southwest of where you guys are, there's there's a big tent there, and there's a small tent there. There's a big fire there. There's a small fire there, okay? All right, you see all that? That's um. That's the camp, right? That's the camp, okay? Right. I was having a hell of a time doing something with this torch. I was spending hours trying to figure out this stupid torch. Just uh. Give me a minute to see something. Is this even doing anything? Hold on one second. I'm getting by a fire just to like, warm up. I'm going to go inside the tent. So I can hang out. That's a good move. Okay. And I'm probably going to... Uh... This torch, I'll be like moving it around at times if you guys, if you guys need to see stuff. Okay? Sounds okay. good. Okay. All right. So it's so. Let me, let me bring up the right screen, the right file too. I've got a different file for all these things. I think there's two writers. Two. Um, oh yeah, there are. I do have two icons. Let me drag them on there twice. No. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll, well, did you just delete? Uh, yeah, delete one. I need to delete. Just click on it and then hit the delete button. I'll, I'll delete you. I'll delete you. Hold on. Well, I, I, think I, I think I already had you guys on here is why. Yeah. Then put your little is, thing. Is, is everybody good? Yep, everybody's good. Points. Everybody good now? Is everybody on the map or no? Yeah, but yeah, everybody's on the map when I press the X space. Oh, no. Because you're not good enough. Yeah, yeah, if you click on if you click on your token, and then you hit backspace, it'll go away. Or you can right click on and choose delete, and then you can drag yourself again from that that journal thing, which is the third icon on the top right. Uh -huh. All right, so everyone's on the map right now. I don't. I feel like I don't see everybody. I don't see. Is everyone where? Where? where, where ping where you are. Yeah, okay, I'm reloading Ryder's page because it was kind of messed up. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, Ryder's not there. That's why. Right. Oh, yeah, I see everyone else. Okay, there he is. Okay. I see him at the bottom. Then just drag yourself out somewhere. All right, so now now, th now this is actually about... Well, you use the school. I know, the, the, I know. Okay. Okay. I could drag him out if you need to. You need me to drag him out? Uh, we're just uh, the, taking a little bit for the map to each draw on his computer. All right, yeah, okay. Yeah, it takes a while. I'll drag him out in the meantime. Okay. 
All right, I dragged, I dragged him out. Let me know when you got. Let me know when you guys are ready. And in the future, maps will not be like this. I'll, I'll make sure it's not. This is like a horribly extreme, but it was the only thing that worked with what I was trying to do. And I, and I had to figure out a lot of things um, in Roll Twenty my first time because I didn't win the whole party. So more you like like the fight that you guys had with those miners. That's what the maps are usually be like. Much more easy to to move around and see stuff. Let me know you guys are ready. Give me the heads up. Yeah, we're ready. We're ready can just look at mine. Uh, yeah. All right. And I'm not sharing my screen. Okay. Who's sharing this screen there? The Dennis? Yeah, Ryder and I are sharing the screen. All right. Do me a favor. Just scroll, scroll up some and let me see what the map looks like for you. Right, there we go. Okay. All right. Now, basically, the rule... I'll leave it there a minute, Dennis. So, the rule is basically that everything that, everything that you can see your character can see. Everything you can't see, your character can't see. Okay? Perfect. All right. And each these box, each these tiny boxes is five feet. So do me a favor, uh, Dennis and guys, anybody, don't move your character more than like five or six uh, squares at a time um, unless maybe you're running away. Uh, because I try to set up everything so you can't go through walls and stuff, but the software is clunky and you might be able to go through walls when you're not supposed to, and then you end up like seeing things and ruining everything you're not supposed to see. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, it turned out that uh, when you when you left town in the wagon with uh, with the excavation party or whatever you want to call them, the surveyors, um, you went you you went right back through the area where you uh, where you killed that guy yesterday. Okay. Uh, those three tents were gone. No sign of those guys, okay? Um, and uh, from there, you headed up northwest uh, 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 into, like, this uh, plateau, and it was, like, maybe another two miles or so kind of steadily going uphill until you came to this clearing outside of this cave entrance uh, where these guys uh, put the camp together, you know, and uh, it's a little late in the morning now, but 11, 11.30, uh, they tell you to eat up good, Okay. Uh, and the head guy, his name is. Uh, does anyone does anyone does anyone want to give me a fictional name for the the head guy running the uh, survey? Uh, Bimbo. Yeah, B Bimbo, Sir Bimbo. Bimbo. Okay, Bimbo. No, sir. He's a commoner from that standpoint. Okay, so Bimbo. And you have to text me or email me that. Okay. Uh, so Bimbo, like after the te after the the uh, the the, bait, the camp's all set up. He tells the guys, "Hey guys, why don't you get around the get around the fire? They're, they're grilling some meat for you guys." He says, uh, "You know, we'll, we'll have you, we'll have, we'll give you a little more food here to get you going before you head up head up into the caves." He says, "So listen," he says, "We don't know what's in there." He says, "You know, uh, you know, so you guys look like a good a good a good fighting crew. You know, make sure you, you you've got your your act together and then you kind of have an idea what you're doing." He said, we've got bed rolls for you, you know. Uh, we've got medical treatment for anyone injured. He says, and, you know, and we really wish you luck, you know. I, I, I think you'll you'll probably make out a lot better than the last group, he says. Okay, the so, last group. The last group? Group? so I do I do a perception check. Mm -hmm. I just want to know, is he really? Like insight. Insight. Not percep perception is your, it's like, your, it's like, the, it's like the environment insights a person. So exactly what happened with this last group? So your your in, your your insight role was was a was a critical hit, on twenty five. Uh, so you well well inside just the, the feeling you get from you uh, feel that he is a hundred percent sincere. He really does wish that you guys do well. He really hopes that you have your act together, and he does actually think that you'll, you'll all think and hope that you'll make up better than the last lot. Now, if you want you want to uh, what do you want to do? Want to ask what happened to the last group? No, yeah, I'm going to ask him what yeah. happened to the last group exactly. Yeah, use your charisma, father. Father, uh, so, 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 somebody do a persuasion check. Uh, we'll give one person is you, you can have a uh, you can have the uh, paladin do it. Uh, yes, Cadgar, uh, give me a okay. Uh, he said, he, so you, yeah, what do you ask, what do you ask him exactly, Cadgar? Uh, what do you ask Bimbo? Exactly what happened to the last group? He says, well, uh, 
You can tell he really doesn't want to tell you. Yeah, but, you know, he just gets a good feeling for me. He says, listen, lad, he says, you know, he says, you know, not everyone's cut out this adventuring stuff. You know, he says, you know, um, you know, it's just, you know, I mean, I, I don't know. You, know, you know how it is. You know, uh, sometimes people volunteer for things or get themselves in situations and, uh, or, you know, take on a job and maybe they're not really ready for it, you know, and, uh, you know, things happen and uh, people move on. You, you guys, I'm really, ho- I'm really hoping, I'm really rooting for you guys and I'm, I'm really hoping that, uh, you know, you'll make out better. You know, we had to bury a few bodies. That's all I got to say. It didn't really work out. I think Director Sorensen feels good about you guys. You know, um, I mean, no one else is going in there. I'm telling you that much. I really shouldn't say this much. But, you know, you guys, you know, we got torches. We got torches. We got medical equipment. You guys, you know, you can go in there, um, see what happens. You can come back out, rest up. Maybe make a few runs at it. You got, you, you know, oh, I, you know, I, you know, I've got my fingers crossed. That's what he says. All right. I'm going to ask him how many groups. No, no, no. no. I'm going to, I'm going to ask him. What exactly made you bury those guys' bodies? Like, oh, we could make a difference between life and death. Killed them. Well, obviously, they're dead. You know, yeah. like, yeah, they, they just they died, they died. No, they died and go on. Yeah, like, creatures what, killed, them. killed them. It's pretty obvious. Some creature inside killed them. Well, the well, um, the well he said, well, he said, well, he said there was one chap who did make it back out. I said bodies. It should have only been one body, really. There was just the one guy who came running out screaming, and he didn't make it. We tried to save him. Uh, the others, uh, I, I, you know, I'm not sure. He said something. I'm not sure. He said something about poison and murder and, oh, my God, and uh, then he kind of collapsed. So we didn't really get a lot of information out of him either. It was really the one body. Uh, the other ones, uh, we didn't really – we weren't going to go in after them. I'm telling you that much. But it was, it was the one body only that we, that we, that we buried. I, I didn't mean to misspeak earlier, he says. All right. I think we're, we're ready to in, encounter, I mean, um, explore this cave. Let's do it. Um, Tom, this is a good spot for us to stop. Um, okay. Pick up yes. Other, if you're ever one of those nights where you're, like, can't sleep and you've, you've already taken a nap and you're going to stay up late, we're pretty much available most nights, you know, from, like, 9 to 11 p.m. Pacific time. So midnight Sounds to 2 p.m. If, if you ever have a sleepless night, let us know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And this is good. This is a good place for. It. So, so yeah. So, 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 how did you guys feel about the session? Even though there wasn't much combat and a lot of story. Oh, that, that was, was great. It was great. It was great. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we're we're, we're good. Uh, uh, you know, we do tend to tend to uh, want to jump in there and start hacking and slashing, but this is this is good background. I do think. I mean, speaking now out, out, out of the game, I I should have asked for some kind of reward for these guys, right? I mean, I should have asked for. We're gonna do this work. We're, we're there, you know. Your good re- reputation when you didn't really do anything wrong only goes so far. Well, well, the re- well. Uh, I think Director Sorensen was gonna play hardball there, okay. And uh, you know, so I don't think you were gonna get a uh, a reward there. Okay, that uh, makes you know, uh, you know, he's he's a a penny, penny, penny pitcher in that regard. Although he did buy the the jewel from Walton Night Fresh, and and Alton, those guys were gonna to try to rob you. Uh, so I made the right move. You did. Those, those, those guys were, were, were those guys were gonna, were going to try to rob you, and uh, you know they didn't know what you had, but you were by yourself. There's three of them. They were poor. They're on the outskirts of the mining town. They were going to try to rob you and kill you if they could, and then bury your body in the desert. Sounds fun. All right, man. Well, we'll so, look forward to the next session. This is this is awesome. Yeah, I, I, I like that. Uh, you know what I like? You know what I like is I like. Um, Especially early on, like this, like it's hard to come up with a story to make people meet each other, and make it kind of believable. But I, I liked, I liked like putting you guys into situations where there's no way, like you have to make a difficult decision. Like there was no easy answer. Like uh, Ryder didn't know whether he, what he should do with those three guys. Dennis, when you came up, you didn't know exactly what. Like you didn't, have, you didn't have an easy. Neither you nor him had an easy answer for what to do there. And then even, and then right. even when Cat comes along later, and it's like, well, what do I do? Or right, I'm going to bring the body to town, you know. You got to deal with the sheriff, so I, I, I kind of like where like it's not an easy situation to get out of. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that was cool. Very good. Very well done. Um, All right. All right, great. All right, guys. Told you later. And maybe we'll do one of these nights. We'll see. I'm trying to get more sleep nowadays. Of course, as I say that, I have my 
midnight D&D game tonight, then, instead of playing on oh, Saturday nice. nights at midnight Eastern. Excellent. So, well, let me know how that's right. going. All right. uh, it's going well so far. Talk to you guys later. Take care. All right. Thanks, All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye.